Boom! We're back. <laughs> back and loud. We're back. We're back and loud right here in your face. Um, I've had, Ethan, now listen to me. Yeah. I have had message after message <laughs> after message. <laughs> Literally, we do have listeners after message. Cool. About people wondering where the hell has this show been? That's not that surprising anymore. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I was called out um, for all these episodes where I go on here and preach about consistency. Yeah. And being persistent. Uh Uh-huh. And being dedicated (laughs) and disciplined. Yep. And why I wasn't. So do we need to explain ourselves? Uh, We'll get into... The, Some of it. The last week. Well, sure. the last two weeks, actually. I can explain. The three l- weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I believe I can. It's been a while. <laughs> so pretty much, uh, I guess it was, you know, the last week of August. Yeah, I guess so. We hired our new sales team at 12 Point. And... It kind of threw my my schedule off a little bit. So to catch you up on my schedule, if you haven't been tuning in, which is funny because obviously some of you have because you're asking <laughs> me about it, and I appreciate it. It's actually really cool. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. But um, I didn't respond to you, you guys that sent me messages, even some that I know personally um, because... I knew we were going to get here and I'd explain it and you're going to listen. So that's I don't want to tell you in a message. I want you to come on here and listen. You got to listen to us explain ourselves. Exactly. Just like all these politicians. Anyways, <laughs> um, so the sales team came on. I was bragging about them over a couple of weeks. But honestly, dude, I, I was running out of time. And when I say that, my schedule for the past two years roughly has been, you know, get to work between eight and nine. Um, and I'd leave every day at four and I was just kind of doing my own thing. So I didn't have to really worry about other people for the most part. So now with the sales team, you know, having to manage and having to be uh, responsible, having to be there, oh, you no. know, and those type of things, <laughs> things that I really, in- I, I do, I've had so much fun. I could brag on these people for the entire podcast. I'm not going to, but I could, um, it, it just took up a lot of my time. And then you throw in some some jujitsu with Marcus and you throw in Tia's crazy work schedule and you throw in family stuff. I I just finally got a little bit too busy. I hate to say that time is never a great excuse, but I just got a little bit too busy for the moment. So that's why I couldn't make it that one day. And I was like, Hey, Ethan, check this out, bro. How about you just run a chat with Ethan? And then if not, Maybe we'll do the show on Saturday or Sunday, and then we'll get back on pace for the next week. And then it just kind of happened to where that didn't work. Yeah. He was like, hey, I'm not going to do the chat. We're going to do it on the weekend. And then I got busy again. I couldn't do it over the weekend. So I was like, all right, we're cool. Hey, we missed one. It's we one. missed one. It's not a big deal. We'll be back. <laughs> and then... You had to be out because you're out of town. Yes. Which was extended into another Thursday. Yeah. I only thought it was going to be like one week. And then it was yep. like, oh, well. No. So, and <laughs> obviously, listen, I don't care. So, I actually had a plan to use my office and my webcam setup that I have for my Zoom meetings at work okay. to do one. And then that day was literally my longest day at the office where we were like the busiest with like yeah. new customers and paperwork and helping people get things going. Anyways, so I remember texting you, hey, man, I got a plan. I, I'm, Tio asked me like, hey, what are you doing? Are you going to work out after work? I said, nope. You know why? Because I'm going to catch up on the podcast today through the the Zoom feature and we'll record it, upload it to YouTube. I'm going to take care of it, knock it out, right? I'll probably be a little bit late for work. Six o'clock rolls around. I'm still at the office. And I was like, I'm just going home. I'm tired. I'm just, I'm beat, beat down a little bit. That's fair. You know? So, and I was like, you know what? It's a good little reset. It's a good reset to just kind of see where we're at. In the meantime, in case you guys don't keep up with the subscriber count, just a heads up, we're over 2,000 subscribers. 
Oh, we are? Look at it. Pull it up. I, I didn't even know We that. are over 2,000 subscribers now. I, I would venture, I haven't looked at it in the past couple of weeks, but I'd venture to say that we're probably like 2,100. If so you look at higher. if you look at our view count on our videos, organically on our last several videos is well into the one hundreds. Like oh oh okay so <laughs> where are we at? We're at two point one one thousand. Two point one one. Yeah. So twenty one ten. Yeah. All right. Uh, the last four videos all have over two hundred views. Yeah. Which for us that doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but sure. for us that's a big deal. And and that is you're looking at, I mean, typical views roughly on YouTube is probably pulling around fifty. Typical average. Yeah. Good videos above two. Great videos over five. Um, and then there's a few that in the thousands was I don't know I don't know how yeah. that happened. Well, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so just, um, just random algorithm bump, I guess. I don't yeah. Know. So anyways, there's that, and that one video that you put Clipped together out? the yeah. clip i yeah. believe it's like over five it's it's 480 okay yeah. so it's right at i'm pretty yeah. proud of that and that one actually got a lot of shares and you know helped out kk kevin out a little bit and he was proud of that clip and it's just a very small clip and we're going to do more of those um maybe not tonight but, yeah yeah but you know any guest that comes on and yeah. has a story like that, yeah. I, I'm I'm more than willing to do something like that. Sure, 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 sure. It's awesome. Um, so there's that. So there's why I've been out. Ethan went on a little trip that he might get into here in a little bit. But I just want to say, we're back. We're back. And now we're going to talk about what we need to talk about. We got a new format. The format now is Ethan's been putting together bullet points on things that we should be talking <laughs> about. Because I just get up here and rant if we don't. We're going to try to keep it tight. We're going to try to keep it crisp. We're going to try to get in, get out, and maybe give like a little five, 10 minute blurbs on subjects. Yes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kick this thing off. So, what do we have? So, Ethan? for me, I, I, I should apologize to you because I, ex again, I expected only to be out one week. That's okay. I was leaving a Wednesday at like 2 a.m. at night. Sure. So, technically Thursday morning, I guess. Yep. We were going to go see my great grandmother. Who is 94 she'll be 95 in december yep and i was under the impression that we were flying there one day over a couple days there rent a car do whatever and then fly back that was the original plan mm -hmm. in like august mm -hmm. september yeah, yeah, yeah and then october got here and my mom was like hey it's just a lot cheaper to rent the car here and then go there Mm. So we drove the entirety, <laughs> basically to, to California, to Phoenix, Arizona, and we we spent two days there. Had a great time with my grandma, great grandmother, and my grandmother from Iowa met us down there. Oh, okay, which was really nice. I hadn't seen her since, I guess. Well, I saw her this year, but um, you you know she's she's retired now. She's been traveling all over the country, seeing sure. all family and stuff. But she, she happened to be that down there when we were going to try and be there for fall break. And we left Wednesday two weeks ago and drove. We got there on Saturday, I think, like Saturday morning, like early okay. in the morning. Yeah. And uh, stayed there two days. Stayed in an Airbnb. It was a great Air, Airbnb. It was like in one of those. It, it was in the same like subdivision, I guess. It's mm -hmm. like this little village that uh that my great grandmother lives in and it's only people that are over 55 so not a retirement home but like a uh a retirement like community a, yeah gotcha. uh, and they it had it's all all its own stuff bunch it has, of town homes yes very similar places well town homes in the arizona sense where it's they're all just one uh, <laughs> gotcha. and that's that's the weird part about arizona is like it's so flat it's especially compared to here but even iowa where i used to live they're still rolling hills. Arizona, flat. You can see to, to the basically the mountains in the north. Uh, it's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and we we had a really good time there. But my mom was like, "We're in Arizona. We're six hours away from California. We could just take those six hours, one of those days that we've got, and just go to Disney World." 
And so we did. <laughs> so Saturday, or no, no, no. It would have been Monday we left. Monday we left to go to California. Took us basically all day. Stopped a few times. We, we took our time. We didn't yeah. push it too, too hard. Um, we took our time. We got to California. I, what was amazing to me is when you first get into California over the Arizona line, it's like, again, all flat. But then almost immediately after about two hours into California, it's just desert. And then you see coming over the horizon, the mountains. And they look like our mountains. They're, they're, they're big. Yeah. And then you get closer. They keep getting bigger. <laughs> You get closer and they're still getting bigger and until like we had to go around them to get into the LA area. Yeah. And those mountains are like at least twice as tall as Signal Mountain. It's amazing. Really? Yeah. They, I, I would I would argue that they're at least two times as tall. Cool. And plus you're also at a higher elevation. That's like anyway. the, the mountains that they uh cosplay in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah, basically. Gotcha. Uh and, and it's the it's the bear like very very like around here we're the very tail end of the appalachians yeah that's like the t- very 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 tail end of the rockies yeah so i mean you've seen the rockies so. i have i'd love to go back again. oh man i want I, seeing those giving just, just a little bit of a taste of the rockies makes me want to go see the rockies yeah full on it's awesome um we went to disney i spent a day in disneyland the original the og and then we went to california adventure and i've got to break down a few things okay Disneyland, we get there, we stayed at the resort, stayed on campus, so we weren't having to like drive in or anything like that. Yeah. We wake up at six o'clock in the morning there, mm-hmm. which is only like nine o'clock here. Right. That's, that was the nicest thing about going to the West Coast is my sleep schedule is already messed up over here, but over there, it's perfect. <laughs> I'm early over yeah, there. Yeah, I'm early over there. So we, uh, we woke up and we knew we had to do two things that day. We had to make sure we had food, which was pretty easy. It's Disneyland. There's food everywhere. But you have to mobile order it. You have to mobile order it ahead of time. At least 30 minutes. So we had to kind of parse together. What do we want? Where are we going to be during the day? Blah, 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 blah. We kind of scheduled out our day. And then we decided, okay, we want to ride the two cool rides. The newest rides at these parks. Mm -hmm. which is Rise of the Resistance in Star Wars. Yep. And Web Slingers at uh, California Adventure. Okay. Which is on Avengers Campus. So to do that, you also have to be on the app. You basically have to join a virtual queue. Mm. You have to join a group, basically. Dealt with this a little bit at Universal. Mm-hmm. And let me just tell you that doing that is harder than buying a PS5. <laughs> Really? The I so seven AM and twelve noon are the two times that the these things open up. You can only do one a day. Obviously, if you're in Disneyland, you're gonna do one and if you're in California mm-hmm. eventually you do the other. So that was fine. We had two days, we weren't worried about that. But to do Rise of the Resistance, you have to get into the virtual queue. And at seven AM, we're standing in the security line outside of downtown Disney, and they open up at eight o'clock. Yeah. The the parks do. So we were just standing there and I was like, oh, it's 6.54 or something like that. So we all get our phones out, except my grandmother. She doesn't have a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're all trying to make sure we're in the right spot. We're all in the right spot. We're on the right web page in the app. And we're like, okay. And I have, oh, I have an iPhone now, by the way. Yeah, that's that's, awesome. that's 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 a nice thing. Yep. Having 5G in LA, perfect. There you go. I'll just say that. Um, but I had my Apple Watch and I was like, okay, I need I need like a second timer. I need to watch the seconds roll by when it hits seven o'clock. Yeah. And I was prepared for that. So I was like, okay, five, four, three, two, one, hit the refresh. And I see the button open up and it's right in front of me. <laughs> I hit the button. Sold out. Or it was already booked. gone. Is our, the, the slots had already filled up. I was pissed because I was like, I know I hit that in time. <laughs> I should have been on that ride yeah. early, but I wasn't. And that's okay. It's okay. We'll have another chance. I'm not that worried about it. There's other rides to ride. It's, it's Disneyland. It's, it's the original. So like my mom was like, we're going to hit Jungle Cruise. We're going to hit Haunted Mansion. Plus a 
all the Halloween stuff's on. So Haunted Mansion for sure. Uh, there's other Star Wars rides. There's plenty of stuff to do. Yeah. So I decided not a big deal. We'll just wait for noon. So we get into the Disneyland. We get into the parks. It's right about rope drop. And we're standing right in front of the castle. We start taking pictures, making sure we got everything. And I'm like, what are we doing first? And I've got my little sister with me, my mom and my grandmother. My mom's like, well, we already pre-aligned, uh, pre-set up that you're going to go build a lightsaber with your little sister. Ooh, nice. And I was like, is she building one too? And they were like, no. And I was like, well, I feel like she'll enjoy it more if she gets to build her own. And they're like, you're right. <laughs> so first thing in Disneyland, we like beeline it through Frontierland, through Adventureland yep. to Star Wars Land. Already having a great time because it's Star Wars Land. Yeah. You see the Millennium Falcon. You see a TIE fighter. You see an X-Wing. It's all cool. It's pretty cool. And what I love about the land is like the, the cast members are all in character, in universe. Like it's supposed to be like, it, once you step foot into Black Spire Outpost, what it is what it's called, yeah, you're supposed to be in Star Wars. Every character is talking like they're in Star Wars. Every person's in, in Star Wars. So we get over there and they're like, are you here to uh, put together some scrap metal? And my little sister's like, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. She was so excited. And uh, that that's where I, I'll, I'll grab my first uh, piece of souvenir. Oh, yeah? Love it. He's digging in the oh man. So this is like a real thing, huh? Oh yeah. This is a real thing, bro. It's hard. It's heavy. It's all metal. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Th these things are like 200 bucks. Are they really? Yeah. But my mom was like, this is your souvenir. This is what you're bringing back. If you want a t-shirt or anything, that's fine. But this is your big thing. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And here it is. Bro, it's pretty sweet. You can take out... It, it makes noises. You can take out the, the hilt and just have the hilt and you put, put it on display. Or you can put it together. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I just it, did that. In the yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. I'll, I'll let you see it later. That's but, uh, pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I got green, but you can get different crystals and stuff to put into it. So it changes colors and gotcha. different sounds and stuff. Uh, but my little sister loved it. She was like all about it. It's pretty strong. But by the time we were done, she was pretty done. <laughs> she was, Putting it together? Well, like she put it together herself and all that stuff, her own. So how do you put it together? So, and that's that's pretty easy to show. So you, you've obviously got the, the it's like a plastic blade or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but you've also got... Literally, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six parts. And then the main thing. But you get to construct it. Oh, yeah. Are they different colors and stuff? Well, or are they all the same? There's thing? there's different designs. There's four different sets of designs. And then you pick all these pieces. So, like, uh, so like there's like the pommel and then like the two grips on the center and then the switch. You take that off. It's, it's really cool. I enjoyed all of this. I'm sure. I mean, that's, I mean, I like Star Wars. And again, so that's, that's like solid metal. That's pretty cool. It's hefty. It's heavy. And I mean, it sounded heavy when you almost dropped it over there. Oh, yeah. And so you got these little crystals that pop in right in the center. And that's what turns it yeah. certain colors. So they've got like RFID chips. So like, you know, you know how you can press your phone or Apple Watch up to a, up, a, up to a thing. Yeah, and it reads it. Uh huh. That's basically what this is. Mm. So people, you you can get like three D printed ones, and it's not a big deal. Sure. But we we had the some gift cards that my mom saved up from the last time they went to Disney. Yeah. She like my mom is like the best prepper ever for it vacation. Sounds like it. She she was just like, I know what we're doing. I know what I want to do. Here's here's the two hundred dollars for this, for this, but then here's three hundred dollars in gift cards for all the souvenirs you want to do, all that stuff. So. Uh, but yeah, you can take these crystals out. Those people are great as long as everybody's on the same page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if there's like other people that want to do what they want to do, like people are like freelancers. We'll we'll get to that. Okay. Because <laughs> that was me. Okay, by I figured. Of, by the end of both days, I was just like, I just want to go do my own thing for a yeah. little bit. It, it, you know, it's not a big deal. It's like 20 minutes. It's good for both. Yeah. Uh, so 
we did that. We rode the what's called Smuggler's Run, which is literally you and four people, or five people. It's six people in total. Get to drive the Millennium Falcon. Ooh. And that is one of the coolest rides I've ever seen. So you're seen. like, is it like virtual or? It, it is va- basically a video game. You you get into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. All the buttons are in front of you. All the seats are in front of you. And then you've just got the like Millennium Falcon. Like the actual Falcon Millennium window. Falcon? Like the- not, the, not the one that you see in the park. Uh-huh. But it, you walk into the, like, the, you know how Disney is. Yeah, I know. Like the queues in Disney yeah, yeah, are yeah. very, very well done. Right. Especially the Star Wars ones. Right. And, uh. You know, you walk in, you're going through like the hangar bay, and then eventually you walk into this like elevator looking thing. It's literally just a turnstile. Yeah. But uh, you walk in and it's you walk into the like sit down area of the Millennium Falcon. That's your holding area for like 10 minutes. OK. And you they've got like the chess board. They've got like the vents and all the different places in the Millennium Falcon. And then you just go around a corner you're down the hall. You walk down the hall into the cockpit. It's one of the coolest. It's the coolest queue I've ever seen. So I can tell you about like universal wait times. What are typical wait times for some of these things? Some of these things, uh, I would say close to an hour. But if you're smart, you you get there when it's like 40 minutes. But even when it says 40 minutes, they're adding on like 20 minutes. Just because they don't, in case, you know, somebody has issues or so anything. What was the to. longest? The longest we did was Haunted Mansion, and that was that was said to be an hour, and I would say it would be 45, 50 minutes. Oh. So. But it's, it's, it's Haunted Mansion. You're walking through. You get that long queue as well of yeah. like being in the mansion and everything's going crazy. And, yeah. Yeah. So for the Star Wars ones, um, they weren't bad. We, we did Star Wars first, first thing of the day. So I would too. Yeah. I mean, just get it all over with. Yeah. Uh, so we did Smuggler's Run. Uh, my mom got to be the per- person that uh, raises the lever to go to light speed, and I was a little upset because I was gonna—I was supposed to be in that scene. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. I took some videos. I'm not gonna put them into the video, but I'll—I'll I'll send them to you. Cool. Because they're—it's again. It, this is one of those things that for a nerd like me, a, a nerd like me. Yeah, you got it, that. It's there. worth. Yeah. It, it was entirely worth the any money to go. So to I gotta ask this question. Yeah. Did you see the Vader march? I didn't see the Vader march, but I did meet some clone troopers or, or storm troopers. Yeah. They're, they're all uh, Force Awakens. So Black Spire Outpost, the Star Wars land, is actually in canon. And it's in between Episode 7, Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi. Everything that happens in the park is set between those two movies. Okay. So you see First Order stormtroopers, and they're walking around. And <laughs> another one of those things that is just super interesting is how in character it is. If you bought a lightsaber and you're carrying it around in that bag that I have, they come at you. They, they don't come at you, but they'll like, they'll stop you. Be like, what's that? <laughs> and no matter what you say, they'll, they'll have some kind of quip about it. It's always yeah. funny. Uh, I have another story about that, but, um, but so we, we do smugglers run and then we're like, well, it's like 10 o'clock. We've got two hours before we want to do Rise of the Resistance, the other, the, the virtual queue ride. What are we going to do? We went shopping, of course. It's, it's Star Wars land. There's plenty of, there's like a whole like bazaar there that you can go into like these little shops and get stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's just like toys and stuff. It's kid stuff. Yeah. But there were some really interesting things that you could buy there. It's like, there was, there was another lightsaber bag that was like made of denim and like suede. Looked awesome. It was only sixty bucks. Um, there was like uh, miniatures of like the Millennium Falcon, yeah. Atats, Tie Fighters. It's even Universal. It's things you just can't buy somewhere else. Yeah. Like even if you go online, you're not probably going to find them. No, like, you got to get them there. It's always sold out on online. Yeah, you got to get them there. Yeah, and and that's one of those things. I've looked at some of the other some of the souvenirs that I didn't grab because mm-hmm. I didn't have the money, and they're all sold out. Even the bag that I, I was going to get really sold out. Now, would I ever really use that bag? No. But, but I cool. want to say I have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we decide we're going to just start walking around the parks after we get done shopping a little bit. Plus, we didn't want to carry everything yeah. all day. Um, so we didn't buy it too much. But we eventually finally meandered our way into Fantasyland, which has my mom's favorite ride, which I don't know why, which is it's a small world. 
And again, it's a classic, just like Haunted Mansion, just like Jungle Cruise. Yeah. You have to do it if you're Disneyland. Now, if you're in Disney World, it's a different story. You've done it once, you've done it Did you Jungle times. Cruise? We didn't get to do Jungle Cruise. Got too dark. But we could have, but it was too dark. We didn't want to do Jungle Cruise at night. We didn't see the real reason to. Yeah. But I, I was 100% game for it. But by that time, my little sister was tired. We had just done Haunted Mansion, and she did not enjoy that. Is The Rock tied into that at all? I think so. I want to say he is. He's tied into the Fast and the Furious right now at yeah. Universal. I, I want to say there may be like like in the queue. He yeah. may be the vo- voice announcer or something gotcha. like that. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, I, I don't know. We didn't write it. But uh, we do it. It's a small world. And I'm looking at my watch. I'm, I'm keeping up. And I realize, oh, God, it's 1130. And we get in, the, in this queue. Uh-oh. Uh, we had already been there for a minute. And they, they were like, oh, the rides broke down. So we, we wandered away. And we wandered right by it. And we were like, oh. People are getting in line. Jumped in line. 30 minute wait. And it's a 30 minutes to noon. Mm. And if we want to get in this queue, I got to be able to get into it. So I, I say, okay, we're getting on. It's a small world. Hopefully we're done and out of it by the time the queue drops. We were uh, in the ride when noon rolled around. And I was like on my phone. I was, I was like, I didn't even pay attention. I mean, I've done it. It's a small world before. Yeah. I know the thing. Right. I wasn't into it. My little sister was into it. My mom was into it. My grandmother was into it. That's fine. So I'm literally on my watch. I'm the only one doing it too. I was a little pissed off about that. And I'm like, okay, five, four, three, two, one, click, refresh. Okay. Get in. We're on it. We got, we got the spot. Okay. And I was pretty happy about that. I'm proud of that. Again, it was harder than buying a PS5. Right. But I've, I've done that. So it's one of those things. Um, but it tells us your Q, your Q number is 155. We are currently on 70. I'm like, how does that work? How, how quickly are the queues going? What, what's the time frame here? Yeah. They don't give me a time frame, which to be fair, they probably wouldn't know it anyway. So it's whatever. But I have no idea when we're supposed to be there. So as soon as we get out of It's a Small World, we go try and find something to eat and we hang around uh, Star Wars land a little bit longer. And they're like, oh, it should only be maybe an hour. We're, we're closed down because of, a, of, of an issue. So we'll probably be up in an hour. So maybe two hours. So we start walking away, start wandering. And then the queue finally comes up. We're like, oh, we should probably go back over there. We ended up spending about an hour just waiting, doing mm. nothing, okay. which pissed all of us off because we realized even though they called your number, you don't have to go immediately. You have an hour to go get in line. Oh. So realistically, we wasted an hour to wait to wait an hour and we could have just had two hours basically. Mm. But, you know, we got to get the ride. We got to get on it. It was cool. It was the I would say that's the second longest ra- wait. Just because of how many people there were. Yeah. I didn't realize how many people there would be in that queue. But it's like three or four. Uh, actually, it was about 10 queue numbers. Gotcha. In, in the, in the, uh, at a time. And of course, they have an hour to do it. So they don't have to be there immediately. So right. you've probably got even more people behind you and in front of you sure. trying to get on it. Sure. But we finally get on it. And I will say this. All that time waiting was wasted that we could have done something else. But getting on that ride and riding it was absolutely worth it. Okay. It was 100% worth it because, again, you're in Star Wars land, so everybody's already in character. But you, you're, you're like trying to do all this stuff and you're helping the resistance and fight against the First Order and all this and that. You come to this room and it's got like a, a this silo thing, this uh, cylinder thing, uh-huh. and then like a little bit of... Uh, like mechanical engineering computer stuff. Mm-hmm. And I will say this throughout the queues, they have those, those white or clear panels that you yeah. see in like Hoth in the movies. Okay. And it was, those were super cool to see. Um, but you're standing in this room and they, they shut the door behind you and you're like, what's, what's going on? And then BB eight rolls out the little spherical robot. Mm-hmm. And seeing that as a practical effect was awesome. Cause I, I don't know how they do it. Right. I mean, I'm sure magnets, but still, it's yeah. impressive. And then a hologram comes up in that cylinder. 
And that is, again, one of the coolest effects I've ever seen. And Disney's known for doing holograms. Like in Haunted Mansion. They're, yeah. All the ghosts are just holograms, technically. Right. But this one was very well done. Very, very well done. And it's just Ray, and she's talking, blah, 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 blah. You get on the ship, you go through this thing, and you're on a ship, and it feels like it lifts off, off the ground. I don't, again, I don't know how they do it. Because <laughs> it wasn't an elevator. I do know that. Right. But... You get on the ship and you're you're evidently like transporting something and you get stopped by the first order and you get pulled onto the star uh the star destroyer and you walk out from the from the like ship you're on into a hangar bay mm. and it's just this huge huge room and it's it's the hangar bay of like from Star Wars yeah. you just see like a a force field and you see space it's awesome it looks real looks amazing and there is, I would say, three dozen stormtroopers just standing there, motioning you to go where you're supposed to go. And they all look hyper realistic. I'm sure they're all mannequins, but I'm pretty sure I saw some of them move their heads. <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just one of those things that you, as soon as you step out and you see it, you're like, you, you kind of lose your breath a little bit. Right. It's impressive. Um, the ride was really, really good, but I would say the queue was just as good as the ride. Um, so after that, you know, uh, we're going through the star destroyer and there's like Imperial soldiers all around. And one of them stops me and he's like, what's that on your back? I'm like, uh, 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 just, uh, some scrap metal. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. He's like, I know what it is. It, it don't worry about it. It's not real. <laughs> it's funny. And I realized something that, uh, if I ever do become a cast member at any Disney park, I want to be a villain, so I'm just be an asshole all day. Gotcha. <laughs> like, it, what else are you gonna do? It's like a heel in pro wrestling. Yeah, you, you get to be a heel. Exactly. You just get to be an asshole to people, and they're just like, <laughs> he's being an asshole. It's funny. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. So we do that ride. We do all of that. I had a great time. Um, and once we get off that, we do haunted mansion. And my little sister, bless her heart, she's eight years old. She's almost nine. Yeah. She was super excited about Haunted Mansion because it's not just Haunted Mansion because it's Halloween. It's Jack Skellington takes over the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. So true. it's like Christmas slash Halloween themed because it's night, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. And she's super excited to see Jack. She's super excited to see Sally. And Sally is actually up on the second level of Haunted Mansion, like waving at people. Okay. Which is really cool. Yeah. Because obviously with the pandemic and everything, they don't, they, there is no character interaction like close up they're oh. always behind like a fence and like the garden areas or like oh. up up above or on a stage mm. so even though you're not getting the interaction you still get something like you can get a picture with characters yeah um and she loved it but then she realized oh no we're getting on a ride called the haunted mansion mm. and she starts like I don't want to do this. This is going to be scary. Mm. I don't like How it. How old is she? She's eight. Gotcha. And she's she's like on the cusp of, and she she even said this a few times. She was like, "That's not real. That's that's just fake." And I'm like, "Noel, you gotta you gotta you gotta believe in the magic a little bit." She's like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So we get on a haunted mansion, and I love haunted mansion. It's again, it's a classic ride. Yeah. You can't really hate on it. Right. It's all still really well done. And we get around this part. And then I would say probably the scariest part is like this skeleton looking face on a on a animatronic and like it's projected. So the face like goes from the from the head of the character into like this cage Ooh. and he like cackles at you. And we break down. Mm. The ride is still moving all around us, but we're not moving. And the car in front of us is my little sister and my parents. And she's sitting right in front of this animatronic. And every two seconds, it's cackling at her. Um, and I'm like, oh, no. She's, she's, being, she's being traumatized before my eyes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, it takes like five to ten minutes for this ride to keep going. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just sitting there like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And... So we finally get off of it and she just looks at me and she says, I never want to do that ride ever again. Never make me do that again. <laughs> well, hey. And I'm like, listen, that was your mom. So yeah, don't look at me. You get what you get. <laughs> yeah. So eventually 
the, it, it, by the time we were out, were out of Haunted Mansion, again, that was the longest queue, and it was like a solid hour. So it's not bad, man. No. I've stood in longer at Universal. Yeah, me too. I, when me and my mom used to go to theme parks yeah. every three or four years, yeah. we waited in very long lines. Yeah. Um, Even Six Flags is the worst. I've never been to Six Flags, and I don't really want to because of that. Yeah, it's the worst, man. I would rather go to Disney or Universal and be in an experience yeah. rather than just riding rides. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Yeah, the queue is literally just a line. Yeah. There's no there's no fun of it. Yeah. And that's why that's why I can appreciate when I'm waiting in long lines at either of the two parks down in Orlando or California. Yeah. Because it's even though you're in a queue, you're there's stuff to look at, there's easter eggs to see, especially like Harry Potter. Yeah. Like especially the the I think it's dueling dragons with the goblet right mm-hmm. in front of you. Like yeah. that's super cool. Yeah. Um but yeah, no. So we get off of that, it's night. I'm like, "Hey, I've got to go get souvenirs because we're not coming back into this part. Yeah. So I've got Star Wars stuff to get. I got this. So one of the girls at work, she's pregnant and her and her husband are super, super into Star Wars. They're like three years older than I am. Yeah. And so I was like, what can I get them? Like he's super into like getting the, the black figures. Sure. The, the like series, black series, which are like high quality figures. Right. Um, and I was like, ah, I should try and find one that may be like, is only in Disney parks. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And I go back to the Star Wars land and I find in the bazaar, there's like this wooden, it's like a toy shop. Yeah. Just like very like puppet toys and like very basic toys. And there's this wooden sand crawler made out of entirely of wood, pretty high quality too. And, and you can open it up and it has a little jaw was in it. I was like, that is the perfect baby gift that I could ever get. So I got one of those. That's cool. Got a bunch of pins, which reminds me. Uh, nope, not this bag. It's this bag. That one's my one. Uh, there you go. I, I, I just had a bunch of stuff that I got. Oh, no. Fell off. Hold on. I got I got you something. Uh-oh. Uh, and, and I got everyone a pin because I was like, other than the people that I might be able to get something really cool for, yeah. Um, it's just easiest to get pins. Yeah. I and pins. I couldn't find any pins of anything hey you know what i use cool? every day in my life what a pin exactly every day oh pin i'm talking about pins oh Not like a, a sweet like a pin pin yeah like a wear a pin yeah so you wouldn't necessarily use this every day <laughs> but if you ever go to disney i, could. I mean hey if you ever go to disney you'll have this oh. let me see what we got here oh. i mean what else would i get you hey let's what check it out i mean hey <laughs> look at this <laughs> It's my guy. Yeah, it's, it's Maui. the Rock. It's Maui. Yeah, you can't beat that. No, and, and I will say this: it was a, it was kind of a struggle to find one of those. I didn't yeah. see a lot of Moana stuff, which was kind of surprising. Huh. So that's cool. Now, okay, pins. So you tried to get a pin for everybody that matches something that they enjoy. Yeah, that's so like, cool. Like so a Christmas for, ornament. Yeah. So for Sting, I got um, you know, Jiminy Cricket and Pinocchio. How yeah. he has like that little medal. It says official conscience on it. Yeah. I got I got sting a conscience. That's cool. <laughs> uh, no, man, that's I also cool. have a Halloween idea, which kind of leans in, into all this. I found the hat; it was just in kid sizes. Stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be Russell from uh, Up. Okay. <laughs> I got the grape soda pin. There you go. It's, it was perfect. So so yeah, that was that was the first day. That's Star cool. Wars. Yeah. Um, at the very end, I was like, "What can I do alone? I don't have to worry about anybody else. What can I do?" And I realized. One of the, <laughs> you already know, bro. Yeah, uh, one of the uh, Star Wars eateries isn't for food. It's a cantina, like in Star Wars. Oh yeah. So I get in the waiting list, and it's it, there's no walk-ups for this one. It's only reservations, and you have to show ID. <laughs> you have to show ID because it's all alcoholic. <laughs> so I was like, I am twenty-one. Or I'm older than 20. Yeah. I can drink. I don't drink often, but I'll But you can I'll heck you and drink to. for Star Wars. Sure. So, so it's like the old it's like the actual like in the movie type stuff. Yeah. And I'll say this. It was it's Halloween. Oogie Boogie's Bash was in California Adventure. We did it really smart. The Halloween events were in the other park the nights we were at the parks. Oh. So okay. we we didn't have a bunch of people trying to clamber to do certain things. Sure. So we could do mostly everything we wanted. 
other than waiting. Um, so I get into the cantina and I guess somebody had like th- th- this party had like this pass to go from the Oogie Boogie Bash, which is like the trick or treating and everything, all costumes and all. And they moved over here to come get drinks from Star Wars. And I'm I'm being led through because, again, reservations only. And they had to check your ID at the door. Yeah. I walk in. The first thing I see off to my left is like a bunch of people dressed up in really high quality costumes, just like having a blast and laughing super loud. I walk in and it kind of like took me back. And I was like, where the, uh, it, it kind of felt like I was watching, walking into a, a fucking space cantina with a bunch of aliens right next to me. So are those <laughs> people like cosplaying or people that are there? Well, they're cosplaying for sure. Cause they're really high quality, but they're guests. They're, they're people that went to the parks. But they had gone to yeah, that's what the I'm Halloween like they're, stuff. They're not a part of the... No. But it was it was one of those things that the atmosphere immediately, as I walked in, I was like, oh, yeah. That's I pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And there's, there's like this robot playing music. And I'll say this. I don't know how they did it, but the music that was playing while I was getting my drink is like poppy. It, it, it sounds like modern pop music, but nothing like you've heard before. So it was like riffs and note structures from like a Billie Eilish song, a Katy Perry song, and the Weekend song, all mushed together with no lyrics, but you recognize all of it. Mm. It's like all the best like movements in music. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I like this. Because again, they're not going to spend the money for music, and it's in, it's supposed to be in space, yeah. but they're getting all the good stuff, so you're, it's all stuff that you like to hear. Okay. And I got a drink. It's called the Outer Rim. It was basically supposed to be a margarita, um, and it was like, it was like f- super fruity, but like it had a few fruit pr- puree on uh, top. Uh-huh. It's like this weird gelatinous thing. It looked, it did not look like it was going to taste good. Yeah. It looked like a star Wars drink. Yeah. And as soon as I drank it, I was like, oh no, that's really alcoholic. <laughs> it was like pure liquor with just a little bit of fruit. So on it top. didn't taste very good. It tasted great. Really? I loved it. Oh. And I was very surprised with myself. And I started talking to some people and, and they were, you know, uh, they were from the area. I, I started just leaning into this bar experience. Yeah. I don't do that. Right. I don't go to bars. Sure. But I started chatting up everybody. I was having a great time. Yeah. And eventually I was like, okay, it's 1050. The park's closed at 11. I should probably head out. I stopped by Pizza Planet in Tomorrowland, got a slice of pizza, and went back to my room. <laughs> Cool. That was the first day. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and speed this up because we're already going really long. And we got plenty of stuff to talk about. Yep. Uh, so California Adventure, really the only thing I want to talk about is Avengers Land. Okay. Because there's two things that happened to me in Adventure Land that was really awesome. Uh, so we wake up next day, same thing, just sort of woke up 7 a.m., got in security line, got into the park, or in, into downtown Disney, waiting in the parks, got into rope drop. First thing we do, Avengers Land, because yesterday it worked perfectly. We we did Star Wars Land all at once, kind of got it out of the way, saw everything we wanted to see, met all the characters, blah, 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 we'll move on. This time, however, I knew what I was doing. I had my mom's phone and my phone at the same time in my hands, looking at my watch, got in, first thing of the day, doing Web Slingers. Nice. And now Web Slingers as a ride is also very cool. Sounds Spider-Man-y. It's Spider-Man to the max. Okay. You get in and it's you're at web. It's like uh, it's some kind of laboratory for Peter Parker to have like a hey, let's all come together and figure out new technologies together. Okay. Because it's supposed to be set after Endgame. Gotcha. Uh without Tony Stark, just with all of his money. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh but um you get in and like he's working on these micro uh the the spider bots, which are like lightsabers for mm-hmm. Avengers Land, basically. And he's uh you go in and you're talking to spe- it's literally tom holland in front of you as a, another like screen That's he's cool. talking to you and then the, the spider bots start replicating and then they keep replicating or keep replicating so the issue is there's spider bots everywhere you got to stop them blah, blah 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 you get on this ride and it tells you hold out your hands in front of you and it scans you and it scans you into the car so that it follows your movements and so it is a video game in this ride 
that you are shooting webs to stop the spider bots. It's like one of those, it's like, a, have you ever done the Buzz Lightyear uh, ride in Tomorrowland? No, I have not. It's, it's, it's basically like a shooting gallery. Okay. But it's on these screens and it's, it's literally you flinging out your arms to shoot the webs. It's super fun. My little sister had a blast. I bet. So However, it literally like does the virtual reality to your... Kind of, yeah. And it's like 3D glasses, all that stuff. It was awesome. Okay. I will say this. My arms got really tired. You need to work out more if your arms <laughs> get tired of doing Spider-Man right Well, it, it's literally you doing this constantly. You need to work out more. I don't need you well, going yes. to Disneyland and getting tired. <laughs> That's embarrassment for this podcast. Well, no. Actually, I will say this. I maxed out all of my fitness rings, and I wasn't tired after the first I was going to ask you, what was your uh, two walking distances? Oh, my gosh. I, I need to look at this because specifically. When, because I, when I was at Universal each day, it was between 8 and 11 miles. Okay, let's let's check. If I had to guess, I'd say you're between 9 and 10. Probably. I would I would wager yeah. it's that much. It's a long day. It's a lot of uh, walking. I had not, on the first day, I had 94 minutes of exercise. Uh, burned a, a total of 1,800 calories, uh-huh. uh, and I walked a, a grand total of 12 miles. Nice. Felt great, though. I, I was not tired. No, sure. It stinks up on you. Yeah, it so, does. So Disneyland's a little bit bigger than Universal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then the second day was 10.4. We we could, took a little bit short of our day. We didn't do as much because we only did the things that we wanted to do. Okay. That's um, all right. But so yeah. Look at you, man, getting a marathon in in two days. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Um, when was the last time you walked 20 something miles in two days who knows <laughs> probably the last time I went when to was Disney? the last time you walked 20 something miles in a month <laughs> never <laughs> Good. but uh so we do Avengers Land it was pretty awesome uh there's like different shows of like different characters coming out and talking to, to people and everything yep um but I will say this there's one that took me by surprise it was the Doctor Strange one it was just a magic show uh-huh. uh, but you know, you're in this little area of Avengers Campus, uh-huh. and he's like talking, and everything's going around. It's a magic show, but there's this point where he pulls out like this urn from a portal behind him mm-hmm. that he creates. It's just like an LED with real like sparklers sure. going around, which sure. is really cool. Good cool. practical effects. But he pulls out this urn from Asgard, and he does the thing, and everything happens. I I took that in as like, oh, that's cool. You know, whatever. Later. I'm going back around, same thing as the night before. I'm like, just getting pictures, going around, taking pictures of everything at night because everything's lit up, super cool. And the show's going on behind me. And I'm, I'm off like this little walkway mm-hmm. from the stage that he's on. I'm taking a picture back towards it, not even paying attention. Well, evidently, in uh, some of the versions of the show, Thor shows up when he goes to Asgard to pick up the urn. And Eventually, he'll he'll just say, "Oh, Thor, why don't you go uh, get a drink at Pim's Test Kitchen?" And Thor walks away. So I'm standing right next to the stage, taking a picture, and this happens. I don't even know it. I'm not paying attention because I had already seen the show, and I get a tap on my shoulder because I'm taking up most of the walkway trying to get this picture. Uh-huh. I get I just hear, "Excuse me, citizen." I turn around. It's the store behind me. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, excuse me." And I was like, "Oh, wait." Take a picture. And I, I, I failed. I didn't get a picture in time. What? Because he, he was walking away. Uh, I, again, no character interactions. They can't be you know, they too close. Stop. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, it was really funny. Uh, <laughs> just one of those really random pictures on my phone now. It's just blurry. Do they at least have a good Thor? Oh, yeah. They All of the characters there looked really, really close. Cool. Like, even the Doctor Strange had the just the right haircut and everything like that. Cool. There's an Iron Man. There's Spider-Man, Captain America, Loki. Uh, there's Falcon. As the like Falcon cap, uh-huh. yeah, um, it was really fun. But anyway, that's that's Disney and sweet LA. I'm glad I you did had a go good time. to Muscle Beach. I did show I saw you that the picture. Yeah, I didn't get I did. to work out at Muscle Beach though. Well, that surprises me. Yeah, oh, yeah, surprising. super surprising. Surprising. Uh, but anyway, well, you said you did pull up. Oh yeah, I did one pull up. I didn't get to work out well, at Muscle Beach. Work? <laughs> Whatever. That's I don't one more pull that. up than somebody did that day. It's one more pull-up that I would have done that day. Yep. <laughs> yep. But anyway, so that's that's the California adventure. Well, sweet, dude. Yeah. Glad you had a good time. Yeah. It's good to get away. Of course. Yeah. It's a good vacation. It's one of those things that we... I, I've i literally taken three vacations this year. And that's more than I've taken in okay, the last five. Okay, Let's cut them out, all right? Well, that's enough <laughs> it's the last, in the last five years since, I, since graduating, 
I've never taken a vacation. Oh, okay. So. Well, you get two more. Two more vacations uh, and you're cut off for five years. I'm not going to do another vacation this year. All right. I hope not. If I do, I don't have enough money for it. Just keep them fucking Monday through Sunday, okay? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thursday uh, vacations, right? But anyway, so that's 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 that. Well, sweet. What else we got? We got the DC fandom. Okay, I'll touch a little bit on it. We're talking about Black Adam. We're talking about all of it. Because it all looked great. Well, first of all, I don't care about the all The Flash of it. movie. Okay. That trailer? Wait a Are minute. Are you telling me you're not wanting to talk about it? Wait that? a minute. I haven't even seen it. <gasps> I didn't know that was a thing. Talking about my Flash movie? The Flashpoint movie, yes. Okay, so I know... Do you know Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck are in this movie? I did not know that before now. I texted you. You read well, it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, Red, I didn't know that... <laughs> I didn't know that before watching the trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're both in the trailer? Uh, I don't think they're both in the trailer, but you it's, see, like, the Batman Batmobile, but then you see... The 1989 Batmobile under a car, uh, like under a tarp. So I wonder it's if awesome. that's the only two Batman. Me too. I'm curious because they could do as many Batman as they want. They could do as many flashes as they want. And I will, I will spoil this a little bit. You see three different flashes in this movie. How many flashes? Okay. There's a flash from Netflix. There, there's yes, or the CW. Yeah, and then there's Ezra Miller, who's from Justice League. Okay, and you see two different Ezra Millers. It's the same actor. He's just got like a different hairstyle, a different suit. Okay, it's very interesting. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that movie. Mm-hmm. More so about the Batman stuff. I'm sure it's gonna be very little, of but you know. Well, no, I, I would say if if Batman's going to be in it, they're gonna get their money their money's worth from Michael Keaton. I mean, so here's what they said. Whoever directed it to girl. Yeah. All right. Whoever that person is said that when Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton put their bat suit on, that mm-hmm. they both got emotional <laughs> re putting the bat suit on of course. because it's such a dark character that when you're done with it, you're done with it. Yeah. And then like nobody's ever went back to it. Yeah. Nobody's ever been like, I'm done with Batman and then played Batman again. Mm-hmm. So to have both of them on set, I, I would love that. if like, uh, just like how Spider-Man is going to be in December, like not knowing if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to be in it. I wonder if Christian Bale is going to be in it. That's what I was wondering. Cause I mean, he obviously he's the most famous Batman as, uh, like, or, as of now. Yeah. yeah. Like for, the, for my generation. Well, yeah. And that's the main generation we yeah. watched in this movie. So, I mean, if he was to make an appearance, that'd be <laughs> even, serious even if it's just Christian Bale and he doesn't put on the suit, I'll be happy. Yeah. Just as Bruce Wayne. Of course. Yeah. Cause they gotta, there's gotta be a Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And I hope that what's his name plays the older Bruce Wayne or the older Batman yeah. or the dad you in mean like Michael a, Keaton? No. What do you mean? Uh, Je, uh, Dean Morgan. What's his, uh, what's his name? The guy that actually played Bruce Wayne's dad in Batman. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause uh, he, he's, that would be awesome. He plays him. And that's always been the rumor that if they ever was to do a Thomas Wayne as yeah. Batman in a different type of universe. See, that's where I think Michael Keaton's coming in. I think he's going to be Thomas Wayne, but as, a Batman in that universe. No, he's playing Batman, bro. He's not. Well, playing. no, no, no. He, it's a, it's a whole know, thing with Flashpoint. I, I know, I it. get it. But also, you're not gonna bring Michael Keaton back to play fucking Thomas Wayne when he's <laughs> fucking Bruce Wayne. All right, don't fucking no. I, I just, I just, you're, I'm about to get me on a fucking fest here. I know Batman. All right? <laughs> I just want to hear Michael Keaton say he's out there, and I gotta go to work. I just, I just need to hear him say that again. Yeah, that's a, that's a. Baller ass. Well, I need Jack Nicholas back. Is Jack awesome. Nicholson. Uh, not, yeah, Jack Nicholson. That'd be awesome too. Yeah, I, I would not mind that whatsoever. How either. freaking sweet would that be? <laughs> What's Jack Nicholson doing? I mean, he's dead in the movie, right? Uh, well, yeah. You well, would well, you would think he is because he fell off the building, but well, it never actually showed him die. I mean, it's Joker. Yeah, it never so. showed him. I mean, how, how many times did he die in the comics? It's only right? it's only taking them thirty what forty two years to get to now and then yeah. jack nicholson comes back as joker in an alternate universe he could have landed in the water or, exactly. or been scooped up by somebody something you know or f- grabbed on the something so or, let's or, move on a little bit okay i know it's late What's yeah up? michael keaton is batman cool cool okay yeah robert pattinson's official trailer finally dropped yeah we've th- gotten teasers i didn't even know they were just teasers they look like trailers yeah i hadn't watched it it looks really good that's what i hear not watching it not the not the movie, the trailers. Okay. Because you just don't want to be spoiled? I don't want to be spoiled. That's entirely fair. I, I actually very much respect that. You know how I am. That I there's one like my favorite superhero <laughs> is Batman. And why? Because he's rich as fuck. <laughs> Zero superpowers. 
but he's badass. And I have talked so much shit about Robert Pattinson mm -hmm. that I want to be proved wrong. And I'm going to go in with an unbiased opinion. I will say this. After seeing the trailer, I think you're wrong. Okay. And that's so, fair. Yeah. But also, I don't want to think that I'm wrong just because I see a trailer <laughs> and I get to see all the cool parts this guy I does. I want to know, know. If this guy invested in this character as much as I think he, he should have. He looks like he invested a, a little bit. Well, Maybe not as much as you'd want. Listen, CGI can make you look like a lot of things. I, need I don't to think know. it's CGI. Yes, it is. I uh, well, of course there's a little bit. Of but. course it is. All right, listen. I'm, I'm, I've seen the guy. You can look yes. at him right now. All right. Yeah. You don't want to work out? Fuck you. Okay? That's where I'm at. <laughs> all right. And then there's Black Adam. Now we're talking. Did you see the Black Adam trailer? Uh, well, the very the origin, the very beginning, yeah. Did you did you watch like the whole the Rock introducing the Black yes. Adam? First of all, name me one more person that's more charismatic and entertaining <laughs> as that guy, just to show you a fifteen second clip of nothing and get you excited about it. Exactly. It makes name no one sense more to person. Me. The, I don't the think way I he delivered the monologue into that was better than the trailer. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I was very upset with the trailer. I did not enjoy that. That what well, it's not even well, it's not even a trailer, it's just a clip. Well, it's nothing because they don't even have a trailer. I know. They don't even have a movie yet. It's upsetting. <laughs> yeah, they're still putting together all the scenes. I know. But I will say this the scene that they gave us of him just straight up cremating a guy with lightning, that got me hyped. You know what's awesome about The Rock? And other than everything. <laughs> 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 that's the clip for the week that is the exact that's, clip for this week that's the clip for this week <laughs> anyways so like dude he you can tell he's so passionate about being so jacked to play a superhero <laughs> to look better than the other superheroes that wear fake superhero suits oh yeah and he's literally just wearing compression shirts yeah and compression pants <laughs> And he's going to look even better Zachary than all of Levi, them. Zachary Levi, because they did have like a Shazam 2 thing. Yeah. Zachary Levi looks good. But like, even when he's in his suit, you could you feel like it's fake, even though he's he's pretty bulky now. Yeah, but he's... And then you put him next to the rock, like directly before or directly after, and you're just like, what? anybody, <laughs> any of them, anyone in Hollywood. I would argue Chris Evans is the only one that looks as good as the rock does. Bro, you put Chris Evans next to the rock, you're going to... In his, in like Winter Soldier? He looks pretty good. No, um, okay, that's the movies, all right? No, I, I mean, like, Understand. outside of it. Yeah, no, anyway. I'm saying, you take Chris Evans in Winter Soldier in peak condition. Yeah. All juicy and roidy, all right? <laughs> and then you just take The Rock in his off season, and you just put those two humans beside each other. You're like, oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I get that one. Yeah. That makes sense. That, that makes th sense. I think that He's also black and Samoan, and he's white. I get that one now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I, I will say this. He's very intimidating as Black Adam, which is which is what I wanted. Yeah, and so you you know he's getting blasted on Twitter. Oh yeah, why? I haven't heard why. I just knew that he was okay. Well, he's getting blasted in a fun way. Nobody. Oh, okay. First of all, nobody hates The Rock. You can't cancel The <laughs> you Rock. <can't. laughs> and like he's never. He's not going to do it. He's had fifty years now to say something wrong and get canceled, and he hasn't. He's always which played it impressive. the right way. Very like, impressive, him. like Tim Tebow. Very yeah. impressive with both those guys. But but the Rock to play a heel and also not be canceled is <laughs> yeah. very very impressive these days. So and to crack, like crack corny jokes, like he gets oh, yeah. away with some stuff. Anyways, so the Rock in his Twitter put you know the 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 hierarchy in the DC universe is about to change. <laughs> yeah, because and he's putting there like we all know that. You know, not only is Superman's weakness kryptonite, but also one of his greatest weaknesses is to magic. And we all know that Black Adam's number one attribute is magic. Yep. And that's why the hierarchy is going to change. The way he worded it, though, was more to the point factual exact. Yeah. Right? So he's getting blown up by comic book nerds about <laughs> yeah. how I mean, Superman's yeah. only weakness is kryptonite, but he is susceptible to falling for magic. It's yeah. not a weakness. Yeah. All right. It's, it's stupid. It's so they're lightning. saying He's all these things. So and they're, like, and they're like, they're like, <laughs> how do you honestly think that you, the black Adam could beat Superman? And they're like going like all like they're, <laughs> they're getting into it that way. He hasn't responded yet, but I know that when he does, it will be clever. <laughs> He's just going to respond by in the movie. Henry Cavill is going to get beat up. Yeah, he's going to respond by saying, my wife, or my ex-wife, manages Henry Cavill, and he's <laughs> going to be in Black Adam as a teaser. I would love that. And it's probably going to be in the end credit scenes. Of course. And they're going to do Black Adam Superman, and he's going to restore the Snyderverse. Well, it, it, 
I I think what would be good is Superman being in this movie. It's fine. In I credit. Think, I th- yeah, yes. I think second movie for Black Adam is Shazam's third and Henry Henry Cavill's what third, fourth, fifth. It's all three of them, and that's a lot of star power in one movie. But I think Shazam and Superman versus Black Adam is perfect. That's that's a comic book thing. That's like in some of the animated movies. Those two have to team up just to beat Black Adam. And I think as a live action movie, if I can get Henry Cavill as Superman one more time, I'd be happy with that. It's going to happen. You know, it's and why I just said it's going to happen. Yeah. His ex wife, Danny Garcia, is Henry Cavill's manager. Yeah. Also The Rock's manager. Yeah. They're all under Seven Bucks Productions. It's going to happen. It just makes sense. And guess who is Henry Cavill's trainer nutritionist? Danny Garcia's current (laughs) husband, who is also The Rock's. Gotcha. It's gonna happen. I'm just letting you guys know it's happening. For leave it. Sure. To, leave it to the Rock to have a very successful relationship with his ex-wife. And guess what? <laughs> yeah, right. And get and just calls his kid. And yeah. guess how it's gonna work? It's gonna be in credit scene. It's not gonna be Henry Cavill in the end credit scene. It's gonna okay. be a Superman body double. No, it's gonna be a oh. Superman egg. Uh, in the you know what I'm saying like yeah. a like he goes to the 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 sanctum or whatever in the North pole or something like that. Just, yeah. Just something along yeah. those lines. Like it's going to be, Oh, that's Superman's thing. And it's going to be like the rock doing the fourth wall type thing. He's going to do like the fucking people's eyebrow yeah. camera <laughs> for that. I, it's what I, I, I wouldn't be almost willing to bet. <laughs> He's been, this has been his project for like what? 10 years. Yeah. It's going to happen. I, I, he's talked too much shit about Superman and their buddies yeah. to not do it. I will say this. We, we recently saw a movie together if that if we don't see that movie together, I'm not seeing it because <laughs> uh, I need to see you in the theater <laughs> losing your fucking mind. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be on such one. Like, I mean, I'll go watch The Rock and Jungle Cruise and giggle. All yeah, right? I'm gonna be like, you, be so you saw hyped. me watch James Bond. <laughs> yes, I will be like literally. I won't be touching the back of my seat. <laughs> You'll be forward the entire. time. I will seriously. See, gets gets on to his nerve. <laughs> and that's where we uh, very smoothly segue to uh we saw james bond it was all right it's good it was, it was okay we'll we'll talk about it in the next video sure that we're about to film but uh right. what do you think good movie bad movie meh james bond yeah great movie great movie yeah worth seeing yes okay i say worth seeing in imax only worth seeing in imax i think so now it's not necessarily filmed for imax it's nothing special like that but i there's something about that movie and seeing it on the big screen with the explosions and the sound and everything. It's worth seeing an IMAX. Dude, man. Also, it was long, longer than I expected. And I wasn't properly rested. That's fair. And I didn't have an energy drink for a while. <laughs> like, okay. So we came from jujitsu. Yeah. And then I, I went, Took Marcus's first buffet that I, that's weird. I didn't know he's only been, never been to a buffet, right? So we went to eat and I didn't eat enough food and um, I didn't have enough energy. Gotcha. And I, I was having to, there for a couple of times I had to catch myself. Yeah. You know? I was, I was, I was pretty like, into it the entire time. I mean, I was into it when I was, you know, I, kept, I had to catch myself a couple yeah. times, you know, cause I was, you know, I was rubbing Marcus's back. He was getting a little, yeah, he was, he, that poor kid. <laughs> well, dude, it's a three hour movie. Yeah. And well, I mean, even even that, just like that first scene is pretty intense. But but it was cool after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After yeah, that first scene was a little scary for a six year old. We'll, we'll get into it because be that be the video we're about to do is going to be spoiler free. Yeah. We do not care. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's one of those things where perfect. <laughs> it's one of those things where that's exactly what I needed out of a new James Bond movie. If it's going to be Daniel Craig's last, sure. I want it to be action front to back. And it pretty much was. It was. And and even the scenes that were down, it was like very intriguing. Yeah. I was happy with it. Now, is it as good as Skyfall, which I would say is the best Daniel Craig movie? No. It's better than... Uh, I would say it's not as good as Casino Royale, the first one. Uh-huh. It's better than Quantum of Solace. It's better than Spectre. It's better than the last two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Skyfall is no. two. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's better than two and it's better than four. This is number five. That's fair. I, I'm gonna have to agree. Yeah, 100. Um, I'm going to see Dune tonight. Uh, but you're not, so we might talk about it maybe next week. Yeah, you maybe can talk about that, bro. I ain't got time. <sighs> you gotta make time. I, I will Listen. let you know if you should make time. How Listen, about that? I, I think there's. <laughs> I think that's one of those things where there's people that like that. Yeah. And 
so it's very uh star wars ish lord of the rings ish star trek ish yeah. and it is it is game of thrones in space okay and i'm i like star wars but mm-hmm. the other ones i don't that's fair so i i will say this it's it's going to be one of those movies i've already heard this a little bit it needs it it should have a part two uh-huh. because it's it's such a dense book anyway uh-huh. that even though this is like a two and a 45 minute hour movie, uh-huh. it's not enough. Mm. It's just like Lord of the Rings. You, you get the first movie and it, it has that crescendo. It has the three act structure, but it ends and you're like, when's the next one? Yeah. And so I've heard a lot of people more of a that, series than a movie. Yeah. At least a two two parter, but you can't get the 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 type of act the type of stars you need for a series. So you want to do it in a movie. Mm-hmm. So so they're saying, it. as long as it has a sequel, this is a really 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 good movie. It's gonna have a sequel, but it doesn't. It hasn't been greenlit yet. For all of these other series, they, by the time that the first movie comes out, they're at least greenlit for a second one if they're gonna get a second one. It's not been greenlit. So are they waiting on the results of the mm-hmm. box office. So, so that's kind of a thing that's now. why I'm going to see it. Yeah. 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 They're they're struggling a little bit. Yeah. Which I get and, that. And honestly, for me, and I, I think I, I'm going to be going with some some of my friends. They're what time's the movie? Like, uh, it's nine o'clock. What time is it? Seven. Okay. It's fine. All right. I got plenty of time. Okay. Um, but we're gonna go see it, and I think we're gonna have a great time. Cause, I'm Max. Yes, of course. Good for you. It is literally they the trailer we saw said made for IMAX. I know. And I was like, okay, good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I, well, I already told you, I will not even walk into a movie theater anymore unless it's no. IMAX. And I will say this, the the fact that A-List now has like that, that what is it, Entourage thing? That's pretty that cool. You could, you... Have you seen that? So, like, he, he sent me a thing to like sign up for the, the A-List or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been saying I was going to do it and he, I guess he finally called my bluff. So I did it. <laughs> And then I was going to get the tickets. And I was going to get us all three tickets. And I was like, oh, he's already in it. So I'll just let him know what it is. And I had to buy Marcus's ticket. It was only like nine bucks. Yeah. And then it just said, do you want to invite a friend? And I just clicked on his name. So they call yeah. the Entourage? Yeah. yeah, it's called an Entourage. So as long as both of us have the A-list thing, like the the premiere. So we get like three movies a, a week. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you can just be like, bad. hey, here, here's the time. Your, your app basically already gets you the ticket. Let's just go. Dude. Twenty something dollars, like not not more than twenty five, like twenty three. I think it's twenty three. Three movies a week uh, for a month. For a month, and IMAX is free. So if you go to two movies, you pay for it. So the is free. Yeah, well, the the upgrade to IMAX, yes, yeah, it's it's, it's twenty three dollars a month though. So yeah, I've seen I'm I've seen. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a See, I, that's like my guilty pleasure. It's too dark yeah. And like if you said, like if you said, "Hey Gunner, you're only allowed to leave the house and do one thing for the rest of life." I've already got my gym at home. It'll be go to the theater. <laughs> Have you seen, by the way, speaking of AMC? This is a little off topic, but I, I need to see if I can find a picture of this. Uh, the one behind Bose or whatever uh, on Gun Barrel. Yep. Like yeah, the fact that it's completely abandoned. And, like, it's weird. Broken in and taking pictures yeah. and stuff. The whole crawling in. It, Wait a minute, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's shut down. Nobody. Beats I don't know it. how it got that decrepit that fast, but I've seen some pictures and it's like it it looks like a horror movie. Yeah. I kind of want to go up before Halloween. They should turn it into a haunted house. Absolutely, that'd be awesome. And do like old movie stuff in there. Ooh, having like the swamp thing and like Frankenstein. That would be actually really really cool. Yep. Do like a freaking like a golden age theater. Yeah. Somebody will get it once the economy comes back, and they'll yeah. do like the Regal Cinema Eight over there by. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I know, but they'll do something like that up there, like a little small luxury private yeah, seating theater. Oh yeah, great! That's where we went all the time, and then yeah. they kind of upgraded, and I never go anymore. What's next? Uh, after that, uh, kind of the Netflix streaming stuff. Uh, I watched Squid Game. You haven't. We'll talk about that. We can talk about game. Netflix, and we can not talk about any of that stuff. We can talk about Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So here's here's my take. The closer, absolute like knock out of the park. It was great. I loved it. Top five comedy special. I would say, yeah. Yeah. And for the three for of, the current climate, incredible. And three of the other ones, or maybe, maybe three of those top five are Dave Chappelle. I'm anyway. about to cancel myself right here. Are you ready for this? <laughs> no. Yep. I'm not ready for this. I am. I am not ready for this. I'm hundred percent on team Dave. Ethan, of course. 
sure. can't cancel you. I'm I sure. wouldn't cancel you. I'll yep. cancel Sting. Sting, what do you yep. think? Have you seen it? I haven't watched it yet. Well, that's why we cancel I'm Sting. Tired of these sad pussy assholes, <laughs> Will you sit down? Yeah, so sit, you can actually down. be on the thing. I, oh, it's okay. Just I, put, I won't put it on camera. Just put just put the okay. sound over there. Yeah. So <laughs> here's what, okay. So I know you haven't seen it yet. And yeah. I'm a good spoiler. I don't want to spoil it. You can but, spoil it. It's fine. But I want to tell you something that he said in it that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he starts going through like why people are uh, canceling, you know, people that are activists against trans or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he goes, it's because they're, they're called this thing called Team Turf. And it's like. It, it stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. Okay. Cool. So he goes, and you know what? I'm Team Turf. <laughs> you know why? Because gender is a fact. However, you can do whatever you want to do. Be whoever you want to be. It doesn't bother me. That you can do what you want to do. Yeah. But if you, th- if you think impossible burgers are fake, that impossible pussy <laughs> <laughs> is really fake. <laughs> it's, it's not. Hey, listen, Sting. It's not blood. It's what? Beet juice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So here, here's my only question on this. I haven't watched the special. I don't know, but gender is not gender is factual in the idea that there are only two genders. How dare you? How dare you? I sexuality. Can't, I can't believe you'd say that. Sexuality. I guess in oh, today's oh. climate can be now. So, now remember, I'm open about, to debate. I'm about to put an end to the the whole thing. Y'all ready? I mean, please do. I want to get dirty, but this is your show. I'm going I'm, I'm to put it into <laughs> the entire we may, thing. We may put it like a cut, and I can put it like a timestamp. Uh, it's yeah. uh, remind. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put that in my and notes. You know the clip sections? Go yeah. ahead, starter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's my thing. And I, listen, I am, uh, let me reiterate. I don't care what you do, who you want to be, whatever you, I don't care. Whatever. Be whatever you want. But in the LGBTQ. IA plus. Yeah. Community, uh-huh. isn't one of those stand for bi? Yeah, yeah. But bisexual is referring to bilateral, which means you have to identify as either a male or a female to like either a male or a female. Yeah. You can't be uh, what is it, pansexual, or you don't identify as anything. Uh, pansexual, I think, is just yeah. It's it's it's, yeah. it's anybody. Yeah. So pansexual so- is like purgatory. Pansexual is basically from what I understand. Don't be- look at me with that look because I'm I don't research this. This is just hey, like we did what, that podcast. You got you got woke. This is what happens <laughs> when kids come home from school and they're like, "Hey, I heard about this," and I'm like, "What the fuck is?" Wait a minute. Texting. So looking? within the abbreviation, yeah, yeah, there's by, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. which means two. Yep, yep. But there's seven. Yes. Well, plus there's there's many a, there's a. There's millions of genders. So then why don't they go after the bi people and tell them they're full of shit too? <laughs> it's fair. I, I consider myself pandemisexual, I don't which means I have been means. laid since I was a part of a pandemic. And the and for the trans community, <laughs> in the trans <laughs> community. <laughs> that is one of your stupidest jokes, and it's pretty much just a dad joke. Wait, wait, a, minute, wait a minute. The trans community. Yeah. What are the only genders you can be if you're trans? Well, well, that's the thing. You I can mean, be no, no, no. Here, what are listen, the two choices? Here, here, here is. Let me let me lay it out for well, you. I think there's male, female, and confused. There's male, <laughs> female, and everything in between is what they say. It, well, confused, yeah. Yes. Because how do you have tits with a dick, or you know, but, but, how do you but have don't a, you know a vagina there, with no tits? There are people that have. That? Well, I mean, that happens. A vagina with no tits. I mean, my sister. Uh, I don't. Well, know, <laughs> I don't think she watches the show, but I'm pretty sure. I'm, uh, I'm gonna send this show directly to her. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like. There's there's male, female, and, and ridiculously confused. Well, also, there's... It doesn't matter. Why do you, people have to get so upset? Yeah, be who you want to yeah, be. Yeah, and I think, that's, I think that's the main thing that people haven't listened to Dave Chappelle about. And he says it in the show. I don't care who you are. You can be whoever you are. But don't attack me because of, I'm making a joke at your expense. Because I've been making jokes about white people this entire time. And they didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and, that's one of his biggest audiences. Yeah, and I think I, I think that's the the genius of Dave Chappelle is it's like South Park. It's like anybody else. You're, it's it's like South Park. It's like Dave Chappelle. It's like I guess Joe Rogan. Now you're not we're not pulling punches. 
If you're going to make fun of people, you got to make fun of everybody. Otherwise, you're just being a jerk. But can we talk about how good it feels to see a company that you would assume is completely liberal and leftist well, part of are. the Hollywood agenda like Netflix? They are. I, I know. <laughs> but not cancel him and stand so, up for something. Like It almost seems like they're saying, yeah, we're kind of tired of this shit, too. Yeah. So, but then yeah. he came back and took that back and said that he handled this wrong. So, so here's, let me, let me lay this out for you. I, Who, I the can, Netflix CEO yeah, or yeah. Chappelle? Okay. Let me, let me lay Did this out for you. Cause, cause I, I can, I can clear some things up at first. The closure comes out. There's people that are upset that haven't even watched it yet. And then finally people are starting to see it, blah, 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 blah. Still people are upset. There are these Netflix employees that are upset and they take it to like the CEO of Netflix. CEO of Netflix just says, listen, we're about including everybody. And there's a large audience that likes Dave Chappelle, and we want to have content for everybody. So even though you may not like it, there are a lot of people that do like it. So we're going to have it on Netflix. That's, yeah, a, that's what's our, wrong with that? That's our mission statement, basically. And so he says that people are still upset. Evidently, a couple of people, like the, the very vocal people at Netflix, out of you know, who, however many thousands of employees they have, they have three people that are really upset, they, they get suspended. But I think there's on the on the flip side of that there are other things that they were doing that weren't necessarily in line with Netflix. So it's not just suspending because you don't like Dave Chappelle. Well, they also it's you being staged jerks. a walkout. Yeah, to yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago at least. Yeah, um, the, the whole walkout. And then there were people, there were Netflix employees and activists that were protesting, attacking Dave Chappelle fans, and that's not okay either. Well, yeah, it's Antifa. It's fine. Well, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, let's, there, there's a story that we can talk about later. But what's the story we can talk about right now? Uh, yeah. Well, let's well we're still on Dave Chappelle. Well, we can talk about this too. Well, it all kind of ties together. <laughs> how do you beat the fuck out of Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle supporters. How do you? How do you? Wait do that? a minute. Did y'all see the uh, Rotten Tomatoes on Dave Chappelle? Oh yeah. What is it? It's so it's just like every other good movie. The critics gave it a three or a five. It was like a sixteen percent when I saw it. Uh, yeah, so somewhere around there. It, it of was, course it was they decently did. Do you know generous. what the the fans thing was like 97. I was about to say 98. 90, yeah. It was 98, 99. Yeah. Same thing with uh, IMDb. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I saw, nice. I saw some good like nice. skits on TikTok. They were like, we're trying to take it down, sir. It just won't go any lower. <laughs> and I, I honestly believe like that is at, at, at least a hundred percent. And you want to talk about me. diversification. There is no diversity in squid games. There isn't. But it's Korean, so it's fine. No, that, that, hey, 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 um, hey, hey, hey. Zero diversity we, in there. We need Asian awareness. Where's right? the where's the where's the, the the black and white Koreans at? There aren't any. Well, fuck, they need to find some. Uh, yeah, well, seriously. Definitely. Where's the trans Koreans? Uh, well, oh, actually, they're on Pornhub. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Got it. Thailand. We're fine. Thailand. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they get, <laughs> <laughs> they, they get shipped out to Thailand. Come on. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, Dave Chappelle, really Oops. good, really good special. Yeah, Go I gotta watch it. it. Uh, but you should watch it tonight. I'm just so tired of this fucking PC pussy ass cancel everything. We don't have thick skin bullshit. And you know, we we've talked about this plenty of times. Mm-hmm. You know, in the last fuck four years. Yep. It, it all starts with parenting, right? I mean, and yes. like we saw this, right? The participation trophies. How pissed off were we when participation trophies first became well, a thing? Wait a minute, those kids grew up, and here we are. Yeah, and they're yeah, they're soft yeah. little bitches. The kids and now got, they can't handle. Yep, things. the kids that got participation trophies when we were growing up are having kids, and now they're the ones with the mm-hmm. the vocal. Yeah, yeah, and th- and that's what's even worse is a lot of those people are also teachers that are teaching kids. So <sighs> I've said this before. I'll say it again. We're we're in the best part of the country we could possibly be <laughs> yeah. in right now. Honest to God. This yeah. place is going to burn from the inside out, and we're going to be sitting down here in the South being like, all right, it's fine. Tennessee is not hot. bad. <laughs> Tennessee is not bad, honestly, no. man, compared no. to most. I mean, we were like uh, one of the last ones to get a bunch of COVID vaccines. I'm proud of that. <laughs> I'm proud of those stats. That's a whole other thing. Oh, how about Joe Rogan and Sanjay Gupta? Let's oh get into it. Oh, my gosh. I listened to that yesterday. Oh, that I haven't heard so it yet. Good. It's incredible. It's, it's, I mean, they're like the Alex Joneses and all those mm-hmm. podcasts are great. This one's like, you can't stop watching. Yeah. It's a three-hour conversation. It's a very good Joe Rogan at his at his best talking to somebody. I would say at his best talking back Dude, and forth. Joe Rogan, like he came in ready. If it was yeah. a five-round fight. Rogan was in a twelve-week fight camp. He came in. He was yeah. like, oh, he shit. was like, oh, CNN, CNN, y'all <laughs> mainstream media, y'all ready for this? Because they reached out to him. Yeah. Sanjay Gupta reached out, reached out to him. And then, by the so, way, have you seen that Chappelle and Rogan are coming to Nashville? Yes. 
So I had tickets to that right before uh, COVID happened because T got them for me for my birthday and it canceled. Um, and then it went to October and then it canceled. And then I guess it's coming back. Uh, yeah. We just don't have them now, but like, yeah, they offered us the tickets the I second think, time. I think the tickets are also based upon vaccine status. Too. No, it's not. It's, it's, ma- not? it's masks. Okay. No. They, they ask you to wear a mask, okay. but they don't ask you to is be Is it Bridgestone? Vaccine. Yes. I can tell you exactly what it is. What is it? So I went to Raw at uh-huh. Bridgestone. There's this app you have to download on your phone. It's called the Clear app. Oh, okay. And on this app, it asks you if you are vaccinated or if you're not, you have to have a negative COVID test or the antibodies test from select clinics in town within 72 hours to do it. Okay. That's fair. Um, and then what was it? Uh, da, 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 da. It's every major arena for the most part and every major airport that's adapting this app is like a trial program. That's yeah. like the moving forward progress mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And from there, you have to sign a bunch of these forms saying that, you know, you sign your life away and let the government in all this stuff. And it's like the face scan gives you QR code, all that stuff to say this. All right. They didn't enforce this until three days before I was going to raw. And I bought the tickets like four months prior to that. So that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. I wouldn't bought the tickets in the first place. So I go through all this, get tested. I'm negative. I go up there and how was I going to tell Marcus like, Hey dude, for your birthday, I got you tickets to raw really good seats, but sorry, bro. Yeah. I, I failed COVID. Don't have any symptoms, but can't go, bro. Like that sucks. You know? Yeah. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Get there. They have these uh, police tape lines and these like tents and you're about to walk up and make sure you're good and everything. These people don't test nothing. They don't look at anything. They don't care. It's Tennessee. They don't care. It's literally just a, it's a, it's a face covering type thing. It's just like a saving face. We're doing our job, protecting COVID. You know what I did? Didn't even get my phone out. Couldn't even show them that I was clear. They're like, you're good, sir. I was like, oh, so I went through all that and I'm just good. And then I was frustrated because I actually did everything yeah. I was supposed to and I wasn't allowed to go in. And I don't know if everyone was treated that way, but 100%, they did not even check me in. And I walked into that. I could have had all the COVID. <laughs> I could have super spread it to the entire spot. Mm. And they wouldn't have known. Interesting. Wow. So but, that's a fact. Anyway, yeah. uh, back to Joe Rogan, Sanjay. I'm, I've got to watch this because, yeah. I mean, did, did he did he crack Sanjay Gupta at all? So the biggest uh, word track from it, uh-huh. was Joe goes, hey, man, before we go any further, he started out like soft on him. You know? Yeah, it was pretty It was pretty amicable. And then he goes, hey, man, before we go any further, I got to ask you a question. Why did your friends at CNN lie and say that I was taking horse dewormer with ivermectin when they know for a fact that is also prescribed to humans to, to fight other diseases within the stomach and also is a preventative and also good against COVID? Why did they say I was taking a horse dewormer? Because I promise you, I make enough money to buy people medicine. (laughs) Here it is. It's a prescription to humans. It's not a horse dewormer. I didn't buy this at Trader Joe's or wherever. Or like, you know, a tractor supply. supply. It's human medicine. The doctor that created this or the scientist that made this won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015 for the studies on this. This has been given to billions of people. Why did they say I was taking horse dewormer? He goes, they didn't say that. Then famously, Jamie, pull it up. <laughs> Pulls up CNN of them saying Joe Rogan's on horse dewormer, where they put a yellow filter on his face to make him look sicker than he was in the Instagram post that he put up. Mm-hmm. And they put the two, the original post and that their filtered up version of it. And he goes, why are they lying? And he goes, well, I don't think that they lie, but I, I it, it's not nice of them. They shouldn't have said that it was a horsey warmer. It's actually a good medication, you know, for certain things and all this stuff. So he like backtracked, but didn't. I mean, he can't, mm. he can't just come out and say, yeah, like the company I work for is shit. And they shouldn't yeah. have said that. I get that. He actually did very well. Just like he didn't do very well. He could have just said, yeah, no, that was bad. But he kept yeah. making excuses. But I, honestly, I was expecting Sanjay Gupta to just like crumble a few times. And he, he was pretty like, direct and smart with how he was talking about stuff. He knows what he's talking about. He's just kind of a dick about it. It it was a, a prime example of two smart people, like a common sense smart person, and then a person that's having to push a narrative due to a salary, mm-hmm. which is fair. Yep. It's fine. Not don't blame the dude. Um, and obviously intelligent. And he was saying, you know, you need to take the vaccine, you know, because it, could possibly help you more. Their studies show that it prevents, you know, if you get sick, it's going to be uh, less damaging or 
you might not spread it as much or, you know, if kids get it, it, they're more likely not to get as sick if they was to get COVID and all this stuff. And it's building up the immunities and all these things, the antibodies and Rogan goes, okay, that's fine. It's hundred percent fine. You, you are, everyone's free to do what they want to do. You can do that. That is completely okay. But the same mindset you have towards that, the other side has towards natural immunity. If they've already had COVID, they have the same or even in some studies, more immunities in their body, natural immunities that last longer. Why can those people not just go with that's even as good or better and that they're healthy enough to not care? Mm -hmm. Why do they have to get the shot if they don't want it? And you're saying they have to get the shot to prevent it, even though those people don't have the same like antibodies or immunities in their system. They don't stay as long as the people that actually got it with like the herd immunity. Mm -hmm. And the example was, you know, well, how do you know that the antibodies last as long or whatever? And Joe goes, well, I tested you on the way in here. You see my spot. It's pretty shut down. You know, like I'm, I run a pretty tight ship and he goes, yeah, you actually do. I was really surprised with like the doctor giving me the test and everything shut down clean and everything. And Joe goes, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm safe. But also, I've tested every day, hundreds of times. And I've tested every day since I've had COVID. My antibodies haven't went down at all. Jamie got it like last year, over 12 months ago. His haven't went down at all. He's been around COVID, hasn't gotten it. Yeah. Been around people that literally have had COVID and other people around that person got COVID. And he hasn't gotten it. And you're saying that if you get the vaccine, the immunities aren't as strong. You could potentially still get COVID. What's the point of getting the vaccine? Yeah. If you can still get COVID. But if you have already gotten COVID and you pass it, you're more likely not going to get it again. Mm-hmm. It's strange. Yeah. And Drogan at the very end of it made the perfect point. He goes, so basically what you're saying is I need to get the vaccine and get COVID. And then that's the best case scenario. And he goes, well, I'm not saying that. He goes, no, you are. You're saying that if you get the vaccine, you're less likely to get COVID. But if you get COVID, you're almost even more or less likely to get COVID. So the best case scenario is to get the vaccine and get COVID, and then you're really good. He goes, no, I'm not saying that. He goes, no, I'm just saying in common sense, you know, pretty much paraphrasing, of course. But And again, that's that's Dr. Sanjay Gupta having to be a doctor and not saying yeah right. I, as a doctor i can recommend that and then he goes on that's, like the, that's him liable. the kids need to get covid shots that was what he was his big narrative was pushing that kids need to get the covid shots for what so they don't get as sick and they don't spread it as much because just because you don't have symptoms cool. have you ever seen the flu knock a kid's dick in the dirt ever ever like outside of you know some orange juice and vitamin c and like a little bit of rest he even agreed that it's very rare yeah. So and Joe brought these studies about uh, what's the uh, myocarditis? Yeah. In, the swell, uh, the swollen in, heart. Yeah. In young males. Yeah. Uh, the heart swelling. Yeah. And he goes, well, that you know, that's that's pretty rare. And he goes, yeah, it's pretty rare. Also, this is pretty rare. Say uh, billions of people get the COVID vaccine, one dies. That's a tragedy. Every life matters, right? You know, hitting with yeah. the whole thing. He goes, if you, but that's going to happen with anything. If you gave everybody on the planet a peanut, some people are going to die. Because people are allergic to peanuts. Why are we mandating something that is going to negatively affect at least someone, but they're not allowed to do anything unless they get that? Yep. How's that fair? It's not. It's not fair. Hmm. uh, I mean, so what? unless it's 100% proven that it's not going to hurt anyone. Yep. How can it be mandated? First of all, like, how are we even asking that question? Not shitting on you. Because you're with me in this boat, but how are we even asking that fucking question? How in this fucking country are we mandating a fucking thing? How is that real? How can you, as a government who is supposed to be land of free, home of brave, make your fucking choices, how are you going to tell me what I should do? So we are pro life when it comes to uh, abortions. abortions, but. We're going to make you fucking do this. And if you die, you die. And whatever happens when it comes to vaccines. No, fuck you. You can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. This is the most ridiculous debate 
And I know we're not the only ones having it, but for fuck's sake, like, have you seen? It's getting to the point that we're nine months into this. Yeah. Nine months. Um, I was trying to find exact numbers yesterday, and Ethan, you could probably correct me real quick online. Yeah. Not COVID, I'm sorry. The the extreme leftist no, sure. absolute shit show yeah. that's going on right now. There's there's people on the left that are like, you know what? Fuck, I'm gonna be an independent now. Yeah. Listen, like this is driving me fucking crazy. Think about where we're at in the economy right now. Okay. <laughs> are we talking about the cargo ship sitting off the coast or the fact that gas is over three dollars a gallon here and over eight dollars a gallon in California? Yeah, I, I can I can attest to that by the way. Or, I was in California, we were getting gas for a rental car. It was over a hundred dollars to fill up the SUV. Yeah. And, and it's an SUV, of course. But over when we got back into Texas, when we filled up the last time, sixty, it was less than sixty. Yeah. So it's sixty six here for me to fill up at UConn. Yeah. Anyways. Are we talking about the food shortage where they're putting <laughs> the fake facades up on the grocery store shelves to make it look like it's full? Well, Sting, me and you both know what they're doing. They're just front facing. They're 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 filling up. <laughs> they're doing a fucking fine job. Yeah, they're filling up an entire aisle. I've with never had a store French front onions. face that well. <laughs> Have you ever have you seen the picture of just French onions all the way down one aisle? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so stupid. I'm sorry, not to catch. I'm being sarcastic as fuck, but no, I'm, you're, you're going to love this a lot, a lot worse now. Let's so, hear it. You ready? Without look, Ethan, go ahead and pull it up. All right, but without looking, mm -hmm. what do you think combined Pfizer and Moderna's revenue has went up year over year from 2020 to 2021? Do you want numerical or percentage? Uh, you can do percentage, but I will try to do numerical first. Uh, combined. Combined. That's the two FDA approved vaccines. You said Moderna and who else? Look up Moderna and Pfizer revenue 2021 to date, where I think reported their six months for sure, maybe nine. It should, you'll, you, you should pull some yeah, articles. Yeah, I forgot it. Okay. This is Reuters, by the way, so it's it's pretty... I'm, I might be extreme here, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say 120 billion. Okay. So is that way too high? Well, wait a minute. So think about this. Big pharma is already a big industry. Yes. So what's a, a large company, you know, you're looking in the billions. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, a big company, $6 billion. Roughly. Okay. Maybe I'm way high. Well, I'm just thinking with the government contracts and everything else, and they're really pumping these out. This is, they're getting paid somewhere. To date. Yeah. $33.5 billion. Okay. So that was less than $100 billion. <laughs> so so here's here's what I found on Reuters. Pfizer, along with its German partner, BioNTech, and Moderna have together locked up over $60 billion in sales of the shots just in 2021 and 2022. Um, these are all these are future agreements, by the way. Yes. On top this, of the one I was going with is, is literally read through. Third quarter yeah. revenue today. Well, no, yeah. sorry. Through second quarter, they haven't released third quarter earnings yet. So, okay. so the sixty billion is probably that on top of what they're planning on doing for their projection. Yeah. yeah. So, what what is the percentage? Over one hundred percent. I was gonna say that's got to be like. Do you know that for sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say it's got to be like one hundred and seventy, one hundred and eighty percent. I would think. Yeah. Through the first six months is what that thirty three point five was. Yeah. But still, I mean, we're talking billions. Last year it was six point five billion. What the fuck. Yeah, no. It's so that's over a hundred percent. If it's six point five and we're looking at thirty three now, you're looking yeah. at what five hundred, five hundred and twenty percent? Actually, yeah, I might have read that wrong. Maybe it was Well, let's see. Six times six times five is six times five is thirty. And then and if it's going up to one twenty. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I read a thousand. <laughs> it's fucking it's ridiculous. ridiculous. And and it's it's also funny. I don't think any of us agree with and like big pharma, but you would think the, you know, the people that are all eco-friendly and all that stuff would hate big pharma, but they seem to be really riding their uh, coattails did, at this point. Did y'all see the uh, commercial that Rogan put out? N uh, the, the freedom one? No, the built by or supported by or uh, brought to you by Pfizer. No. Uh -uh. It's like every liberal news media, ABC, CNN, CBS, Anderson Cooper live brought yeah. to you by Pfizer. Brought to, and it was like a compilation of 55 seconds of brought to you by Pfizer. Jesus. And he just put the clown emoji up and he was like, it, dude, come on. Like, it, don't make it that obvious. Yeah. And then a lot of people are saying, well, uh, Big Pharma has been advertising for years on all these platforms. Yeah, that's a problem well, still. <laughs> yeah, that's always been the problem with Big Pharma. Yeah. And like you got the the uh, the COVID pill they're coming out with. It's supposed to be like pr a preventative pill. Yeah. It's ivermectin with like an added shit to it. Yeah. And the only reason they're doing that is because ivermectin is generic, can't make money off of it. 
Why yeah. so cheap? So they're having to patent something they can actually make money on. Mm-hmm. And Merck is already coming out with something else. Yeah, it's how Big Pharma works. Yeah. When when a patent goes out, they just reverse the. the I'm, I'm sure I could get blasted on all this stuff, and not the way I'm saying it. Well, but, let's just let's just say now we don't know what we're talking. Yeah, about. I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I'm pretty damn close yeah. as far as like common sense grand scheme of things. Like they just flip the chemistry or whatever it is to the whatever yeah, the thing the, is. I, but I we're talking the, we're talking the here and now though. Yeah. I mean, like like we're surprised the big pharma has been doing this. Why is why isn't weed legal? It, I mean, why is manufacturing with hemp? Yeah, why is that. manufacturing with hemp illegal? I saw that because paper, because because paper, yeah. yeah, right. But hemp that they have proven that you can build you can build parts for a car that is going to be more durable than any kind of aluminum that they have you on can, any of you these can build cars. Buildings out of stuff made from hemp. Yeah, hemp is like such an incredibly strong uh, plant, I guess. Yeah. Material it, the, is probably a better word. The and chemical then, compounds in, in hemp can be created. And then stuff. you've got THC. Which has been known to solve all this shit, but what? Why? Oh, why? Joe Rogan actually does t- touch on this. Yeah, I think. he actually gets Sanjay Gupta to agree with him on that. Yeah. yeah. Why? Oh, why can we not do this? Sanjay Gupta, big the guy, I'm pretty sure the guy that ate uh, monkey brains uh, agreed to smoke weed. And like, I'm, 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 ser- I'm sitting here right now. I swear to God, and I'm going, how do, how does, how do people not realize this? This yeah. is the biggest elephant in the room because we're talking about the trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in debt that this country is. But I'm looking at Colorado and they're like, hey, we've been debt free for six years, motherfuckers. Yeah. Tax that shit. Sell it. We're good. We're fine. <laughs> I will say this. Little Could you aside, imagine how much of a dent we could put in the national tax if we put a fed- or national debt if we put a federal tax on, on weed and sold it nationwide? Well, Joe Biden's for new plan sake. is free. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't cost anything. Hashtag let's go, Brandon. Wait, what? what Let's what, go, Brandon. What does it call? Weed? His, his, uh, no, did you get free weed? Fr- his, his multi trillion dollar, uh, new, what is it? The infrastructure new bill. Infrastructure yeah. bill. He said it was free. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything. Oh, because, well, nice. It, it makes sense. Just, just stop. Just look just into don't, it. Don't look at it. Okay. Don't read it. It's yeah. 5,000 pages. Don't read it. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, Literally, it's free. his tweet, 180 characters or less, whatever it is, says blah, 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 and it's free. You know what we should do? We should we should take that and put the uh, uh, we have a house for you. It's free. It's free real estate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can we talk about how he uh, to get to that free? I did see this part of the bill where he's uh, taken away. I, I want to say like three three and a half billion dollars away from from black uh, all black universities that Trump designated to him. But oh, hey, that bill that would I, be hilarious. Hey, I need to see that. They're for the people, right? They're they're for the people. Those, that, those liberals. I have never found anybody that I've shown the first act to that Trump did before, right before 2020. I have never found even liberals that have looked at that and been like, okay, that's there's something wrong with that. I'm sure they didn't want all of that money necessarily. Like they don't want to spend that much money, but putting it where it went, Trump really knocked it out of the park with that one. Oh, he saved how many? Like I can't. I want to say it was upwards over 20. I believe I could be speaking out of church here. I know it's there's some for sure. Uh, Black Rand universities that, that what he did took them out of bankruptcy. Yeah. And right. I, I have no issue with putting money. Well, into I mean, if they had like, that, like so. DMVs and access to get driver's license and, you know, Kinko's around those areas, they'd probably be better. I don't it's know all, what that means. It's only around the white places. <laughs> I mean, I could use a Kinko's right around here. But... You brought Kinko's into it. That's a thing, right? That was the, uh, for some type of paperwork. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> that's that's such a weird pull, Gunner. It's so weird. Yeah, but saying. uh, speaking of weed, though, just a little aside. While we were in Arizona, that we kept passing by this place called the Flower Shop. Yep. And my mom was like, "Why is it so busy?" Like we went by at like seven a.m. It was packed out. Please tell me your mom ate we, edibles. We went by there at like eleven p.m. It was packed out, and my mom was, "Why is it so busy?" And I look over and I see on the corner that she didn't see because it was. Uh, obstructed by the the roof of the car i look over him i was like mom it has a green medical sign on it <laughs> and she just as she's driving she says oh that makes sense <laughs> yeah because i i totally forgot uh arizona legalized too so i love oregon's take on all this everything oregon do what the fuck you want yeah, yeah. figure it out hashtag libertarian that's yeah. that's as libertarian as it gets here's the thing about oregon though if you don't have willpower our population control is going to be taken care of. Exactly. If you do have willpower, you're probably not going to buy the smack. I'm surprised Fauci and Bill Gates hadn't moved out there yet. Oh, did you see just today? Uh, Fauci or the uh, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, 
or something like that, finally admitted that uh, gain of function research was being done. Really? Yeah. You know, like you know, you know yeah. how Fauci lied know? to Congress about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he definitely lied. Isn't they that, call that perjury? Yeah. yeah. Don't, you, don't you go huh. to uh, jail for that? You go to mega jail for that. Is that well, yeah, especially if you do it in front of Congress. That's yeah. Federal prison. Yeah, so. it's like it's like inciting. What is it? What, what's it? What's the what's the That's word? white privilege. That, yeah, he he should be going supremacy to jail. for sure. Yeah, he he he's inciting something if he's going to lie to Congress. All the people that's behind him, he's he's inciting something with them. Yeah, mm. I don't know what they call it though. Steve mm. Van's getting uh, you know, subpoenaed by Congress or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that was a good long episode. Let's go, Brandon. What else we got? I think that's it. Oh, I went to the NLCS, uh, the game they. Oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, uh, I guess they they won game two or whatever. Yeah, it was game two, right? Yeah, yeah game two. Um, so the section I was in in Atlanta, very democratic city, right? Mm-hmm. You know, one of those cities that Biden won overnight. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, there was a water main break. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me tell you something. I heard a bunch of chants at that stadium. None of them said, let's go Biden. But I heard a bunch of chants. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, Marcus was beside me. So the, the people started chanting, you know, Joe Biden. Yeah. Right. And then they realized, oh, there's a six-year-old yeah. beside me. And they looked at me and they were like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I go, he's heard worse. <laughs> And they're like, I love that. And they're like, yeah. okay, cool. And just kept going. <laughs> so. Can we talk about that? By the way, how how stupid that is. I, the I let's go, Brandon. Yeah, I, I I don't think the the woman that that was the catalyst of it at what was it the NASCAR yeah, race? Yeah, was it Yeah, of all I don't places. I don't think she like v- like was meaning to do that, or if she did, no, it's not her fault. It's probably somebody up higher up saying, "Say this, don't say no, what they're actually no. chanting." So when you're interviewing people, think about this: you got something in your ear, you got people talking to you, or whatever, and yeah. you really can't hear. Yeah, and then you got you're trying to listen to this guy answer questions so that you can ask better questions. Yep. Mm-hmm. She just heard the crowd chanting. Yeah, I would assume that if you were on there, they'd probably be saying. Let's you know, go, Brandon. Good job, Brandon. Was, she, she was or, whoa, Brandon. Brandon. Or, yeah. or let's, yeah. So I get it. But when NBC or CBS or whoever it is zooms in and puts their like their audio mics on yeah. the crowd <laughs> and leaves it there for a strong 10 seconds, they do it to themselves. And oh, then, yeah. And then people are hold, now holding up signs so they can't mistake it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then you got Trump Jr. posting every video of anyone ever doing it at a stadium. Yeah. Which is great. If Phenomenal. that doesn't tell you what the mindset of the country probably is. Now, let's be honest here. People that go to stadiums and go to football games, they're a minority of people of the country. Yeah. But I don't imagine it's that small of minority. Well, also look at this. So there hasn't been a UFC big event <laughs> since this whole Let's Go Brandon thing has happened. Yeah. Oh, Wait till the next one. Yeah. Oh. You're yeah. gonna hear oh, Dana White's gonna get in the middle of the cage and start it. <laughs> He'll probably be popping in the noise like yeah. Vince. <laughs> anyway, I, mean, awesome. I just got an email from Trump, so I'm gonna have to get out of here. Uh, no, hey, on the next show, I won't be here for that. Uh, on the next show, though, uh, I will give Ethan full full car blanche to let you know how I shit the bed on the prices right the other day. Did you? Would you do it? Yeah, the guy got called on down. Did, and did you even? Did you get to spin the wheel? No, I didn't get on stage. I got to contestants row. Uh, what, what, he, he got to bid. What was the what was you bidding on? I don't want to talk about it right no, now. I want to know. because uh, I want to guess. What was you bidding on? I have no clues. It, it, it was Real something quick. it was something he should have he it was something he knew. I, the I price used to of. I used to sell Apple computers, right? Oh my god. You lost on an Apple computer and you just in there a couple months ago? Let me explain what's going on here, all right? <laughs> Ask me. What is it? So okay. Tell okay, me. okay. It's a brand How new much? Apple iMac, twenty four inch, eight gig, two fifty six. Uh what's what's the cost of it? Fourteen fifty five. Okay, you're over. Yeah, you're way So over. this came out. Huh? <laughs> I quit. It was twelve ninety nine. This motherfucker comes out, and I knew, I knew it was twelve ninety nine. All right. If I had been in any other position on contestants row, I would have been on stage because I knew the price. First bitch shits the bed, like eight hundred dollars, Drew, or whatever the hell his name was. Refurbished, Mark. Refurbished yeah. bitch. Yeah, and like <laughs> the second one's like twelve hundred dollars, and then the bitch right next to me, hey, bitch. <laughs> says thirteen hundred dollars threw you off and now you're sitting there in the moral conundrum right okay where are they getting these prices because i know at my store it's 12.99 but 
You go thirteen oh one. Who bids a dollar under? So I went thirteen oh one, and he pulled out the slip, and it was fucking twelve ninety nine. That's a strong. You you've watched the show though. You know it's a veteran oh, of course. move. You've got to go thirteen. Who who does a dollar under? It's Nobody. A, it's a veteran move unless you sell them and you're the you main manager the at the store. And, yeah, and yeah. Chris said something very very enlightening. It's Apple. They're a nationwide company. The prices don't change. Do you think I'm thinking about that when I'm a goddamn contestant's row at the Price is Right Live? When you've sold them, yes. <laughs> I knew the price. You knew the price. I got some. I got some pretty badass coasters though, as a parting gift that look like Plinko chips. So that's cool. That's cool. Did they have Plinko? I don't think we talked about that last. They time. did play Plinko. Oh, okay. The woman shit the bed. She only got like yeah. two chips. Oh. Like, Rose at Memorial or Tivoli. Tivoli. That's cool. It was yeah. fine, man. It kind of, it kind of sucked too. <laughs> well, you, we you went, went uh, first, well, they dissected so. the entire show into yeah, such yeah. a weird fucking way. Like the I, people I that did, went up uh, on stage didn't get to spin the wheel. I did, uh, I did security. I used to work access security. Mm-hmm. So I did security for a Price is Right show one time. Yeah. In Chattanooga. Yeah. And so it was set up strange, yeah. but it was fun. Like it, it's fun. It's, it's just, different. yeah, it's just, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. It's like a pro wrestling version of Price is Right. So Absolutely. I wasn't so upset. You know, that I did lose after I watched everything unfold. Yeah. Because I would have gotten to play Punch a Bunch. Mm. So, like, okay, that might have been fun, but yeah. yeah, fuck, that's not Plinko. I don't get to talk to the Yodely guy, you know? So <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. Drew Carey's not there. Like, yeah. Who cares about Drew Carey? Bob Barker wasn't there. Yeah, who really cares, you know? He's still alive, right? He, fuck yeah, he is. Okay. Him and Betty White, man. The last two goddamn television <laughs> legends. Betty White's, what, a month away from 100? Yeah, I think so. I think Bob so. Barker's close. What's Bob Barker? I think okay. he's 99. I'll check I'm pretty it. sure he's 99. Speaking of old people, yeah. how about Clint Eastwood and Crow Macho? Did y'all watch it? No. Uh, I haven't, but I'm about to. Okay, so now don't get all excited about this going to be some Macho Man Clint Eastwood movie, all right? The man's old. Bob, yeah, of Bob course. Barker is 97. Ah, he okay. was born in 1923. Okay. But 23. <laughs> but and it's not even that great of a movie, to be honest with you. Crow Macho? Far, yeah, as far okay. as like a Clint Eastwood movie. Okay. But it is impressive. You know why? It's Clint Eastwood. He movie. directed it. Yeah. He produced it. Yeah. He wrote it. Yep. And how old is he? He starred in it yep. and is the main actor in it yep. and picked the music for it. Of course. And how old is he? I think he's either 89 or 91. Let me check. Uh, God bless. To have done all that at that age? That's off, Glenn. He is. Yeah, he's 91. 91. Okay. Yeah. So the last time I checked it, it was 89, and that was uh, The Mule. Yeah. yeah. All right. So The Mule, the same thing. It's incredible. I, I still say Gran, Tur- Gran Torino. Is that the one? Yes, yeah, so yeah, that was that's that's when he's in his early eighties. He still had a little kick to him. Yeah, that's one of my favorite, and I think it's probably because he directly takes on uh, Asian people. Listen, and, I, and says the c word multiple times. I love it because <laughs> you can't cancel Clint Eastwood. No, he's uncancelable. I, I, I don't think he's uncancelable. I don't think anybody wants to because he'll come after them. Well, here's the thing: he's just so <laughs> old. Find you and Listen, I will kill what's better? No, than old, old I know. People, old people get away with everything. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> Betty White gets away with a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> well, Betty White's also fucking hot. Yeah. I was about to say, to be almost 100 years old, with- I would still bang it out with Betty White. <laughs> Give it a shot. Don't tell me you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Really? You would fuck The Rock over Betty White? Yeah. Well, yes. No. Hold on. You can't say The Rock over anybody. For well, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to bang it out, you'd bang it out with a dude over Betty White. It's like Tia, The Rock, and then I'm done. See, nice he, that's choice. his safety. I like that. that yeah. Like he, that. Ha- he has to say that. That's legally. how relationships win. Yeah, he has right to say safe. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Get that. You never know when I'm gonna put gonna that go in my back. diary. No more girls, <laughs> but the rock. <laughs> if it's for a friendship, <laughs> is this a long-lasting friendship? Do I get to I work sure out in his so. gym? If you get to work out in his gym, I think. Do I get in a movie? Yeah, it's fair. He doesn't like Vin Diesel anymore. Does he give you? Some Can I watch? play Toretto? <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> Can I Jeez. play White Adam? <laughs> you know? That's Shazam, but okay. No, you All can't right. be white, Adam. That's that's racist. You can be trans, Adam. That's cool. And they would love it. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that, actually. I'm cool with that. All right. Anyway, that that was a good show again. Oh, hey, man. <laughs> we haven't had one in three weeks, so yeah. it's it only makes sense to do three weeks worth of content. Absolutely. Right here. And, and to keep it serious and fun. Mm-hmm. So, and listen, everything that we just said, we're kidding. All right? Yeah. You, you Don't had, take it seriously. You had some of our opinions and some of like, but it's a jokes. All right? Yeah. A lot yeah, of jokes. Yeah, let's and, go break. I, I, I think, and, and Ethan's, I mean, Sting's serious. But the rest of these things <laughs> yeah. are jokes. All right. We, so we don't mean it. Chat with Gunner and Ethan's fine. Sting, cancel him. All right. You can cancel him. I don't care. I mean, there's nothing to cancel, so <laughs> yeah. it's fine. We can cancel uh, him. Oh, there is one thing, one last thing that I need to talk to you about. It's very special. You know, a couple months ago when I took an ancestor.com test. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And I took an Ancestry.com test uh-huh. and I found out nothing because it's it said 50% white and 50% Vietnamese. And that surprised me. That was surprising. I figured it was a strong 80% Vietnamese. <laughs> you, you'd think. Yeah. Uh, but there was that one match that I had that was on the Vietnamese side. Uh-huh. Confirmed. It was the only match for the Vietnamese genetics. And I was like, huh, I'll send a message. Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. You know, the chances of them coming back to Ancestry.com, kind of low, because I haven't checked oh, it. Oh, so you, it's like LinkedIn or something. You have to yeah. direct message on that site. Yes. Oh, okay. So I sent them a message and said, hey, this is my name. Um, I, I did link them come, some some of my social medias, just in case they didn't want to use an, uh, Ancestry.com. Uh-huh. And I just said, hey, this is who I am. Uh, this is my biological father. I didn't know him, but we have a 50% match on his side, so... Either we're siblings or cousins. With a 50% genetic match, you can be cousins. Uh, they could be your aunt or uncle or your sibling. Um, or obviously, like, well, n- technically you could be your parent too. But it, it, anybody in that direct vicinity, it could be them. Um, just because of the chances of it being wrong kind of thing. Um, but didn't hear back from him. It was they the last time they had logged on was three months and that was three months ago. So I was just like, you know what? If it happens, maybe I get a message, but you know, not gonna get my hopes up. The last day we're in California, we're driving the six hours from LA to Arizona. And I just get a message on Facebook from this person, and they say, Hey, are you Ethan? that message somebody on Ancestry.com? And I said, yeah, it is. Who are you? And they, they introduced themselves. Her name is Courtney. And she lives an hour away from Sioux City, which is where I used to live. And she says, I think we're siblings. Come to find out, I have a half-sister on my dad's side that doesn't know him either. <laughs> doesn't know anything. Uh, so... I'm going to keep this brief because I don't know as many details as evidently my mom and her know. Um, So my mom told me that before my dad and her started dating, my dad went to these parties with the rest of the Vietnamese guys that he worked with. Fair. You know, they, it was the late nineties, early nineties, actually. They, you know, go to somebody's house, set out some food, set out some drinks, chill out, have a party, just the guys, whatever. Sometimes those guys would bring girls and they would do the same exact thing, but you know, people get drunk, things happen, la di da di da. That is evidently what happened with Courtney's mother. Not the good kind of uh, relationship. Um, not exactly the most maybe consensual either, but uh, yeah, that's how that happened for her. Um, and my mom literally was just like i never went to those parties and as soon as i found out they happened he never went to another one and if he did i didn't know about it so here's 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 a little wrinkle in that courtney's only four months older than i am she was born in april of 97 and i was born in august 97 she was three months early i was two months early i'm just saying just saying it's a little strange but uh but yeah, no, Stang, no, no. Are we talking about the hot Vietnamese sex orgies in Iowa that have been Jesus going on? Christ. Apparently, this is a thing. They have swingers parties. All the Vietnamese and I don't think it was together, swingers parties. I out. think they were just parties. Okay, how many parties have you been to down here, Gunner? Been to a bunch of parties. How many times do you just get really hammered and just swap bitches around a room in a clockwise motion? Uh, zero. Okay, that's See, not, not how just that a happened. party. Not just a party. <laughs> I don't know details. <laughs> You hear you Vietnamese people in Iowa, they get a little yeah. crazy. Now, right? I have heard that the Palms. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard rumors from friends that the Palms. Yeah. It's very well, Vietnamese over there. Well, Viet- I don't know. Very, not, not Vietnamese, but maybe Vietnamese uh, strategies. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. But yeah, no. So I have a half sister. Uh, we've been uh, just messaging on Facebook Messenger. 
seems like a nice person, isn't trying to get money out of me. So that's that's always a win. It is a win. <laughs> it is a win. That that was one of those things that I like in the back of my mind. I was like, if I find any like family, I gotta make sure they don't like. There's no ulterior motives. And thankfully, again, she doesn't know know my dad either, and she's actually way better off than I am. Sure. She got adopted. Yeah. Um, had two parents. Great. For and her. is becoming a PhD. So. Oh. She's actually doing a PhD. Way more successful. I mean, let's be honest here. Anybody's more successful. Than Leech on to that one, all right? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, but she's actually being a. Uh, the reason she took an Ancestry.com test back in 2014 was because she was adopted. She didn't know what her, her ethnicity was. She didn't even know if she was Vietnamese until 2014. First of all, that's a little sketchy that yeah. you take a test in 2014, then you log back into Ancestry.com in 2021. She's becoming a PhD in genetics. Oh, that's not sketchy. Yeah. She's, in, she's in the game. <laughs> she's in the game. I, I take that back. You're in the game, my friend. Uh, and I was. I will say this. I am probably going to send her this this episode. I'll probably just tell her just skip that time frame of. If what you've we watched this about. whole episode, not realize I'm just a big jokester. <laughs> then I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah. So. So yeah, Courtney. She's she's great. Uh, we've, we've been talking about what our game plan is going to be because she's in the same boat as I am. She just wants to find family. If she finds our dad, that's one thing. But I'm just like me. She's, she's kind of like, I just want to meet grandparents and like cousins and other siblings. Because at this point, there's two of us. If there's two of us, there could be three of us. There's more. There's more. And I, I don't, I don't want to get real sad and down about it, but... I was telling this last night to the, the rejected crew. I remember the time that like the state of Iowa mandated child support and visitation via phone with my dad. My mom didn't have a lawyer to do that, but we did it anyway. Yeah. Uh, we got it because of the state of Iowa. And I remember being on the phone. I remember being on the phone, talking to him. You know, he had, he had broken English. My mom was on the other line because it was a house line. Yeah. Uh, and I just remember just very vividly, like one of the conversations, maybe a couple months into it, there was a conversation we had and there was another kid in the background talking in English, calling him dad. Mm. And I was just like, well, that's enough call for me. <laughs> so, Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't, I wasn't four or five when that happened. But so that's one of those things that you remember. Oh yeah. Because I mean, do the math. Yeah. You know, if the kid's talking, he's at least two, if not three, if I'm not only four. four or five. Like, man, that's, that's some shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you on that. That's, so, that's but crazy. yeah, no, um, I, I just, I just needed to share that. Cause I feel like that, that was important. That's, that's an important step in my life. It is, is important. Finding siblings that I didn't even know about. That's crazy, dude. And she was only an hour away when we lived up there. And actually, here's here's the crazier part. I was talking to my mom about this on a drive back because she messaged me. I was just, after the initial shock. I was like, "Hey, mom, I need to talk to you about this." Because my mom had at least a relationship with my biological father. Yeah. So she she's actually being able to like help Courtney figure out stuff because again courtney doesn't know anything i at least have baby pictures with him that's cool so we're getting to be a little bit of help to her oh, good. um but my mom said hey what's her biological mother's name and she told me i told my mom my mom worked with her aunt and grandmother for as long as she worked at that place with with my biological father and my grandmother my grandmother is best friends with her grandmother. And they they knew that her biological mother had gotten pregnant right around the same time as my mom, but they didn't know whose it was. Have you ever heard the phrase small world? I mean, it's Iowa. It's already a small world. <laughs> but, but to be in Chattanooga now and to be... I mean, even Chattanooga, that, I could imagine that happening. That's, that's crazy. But yeah, that, it, it's such a small world. It is, man. And, and, and my mom, my stepdad was in the back and he's, he's like, you know, he was, he was having to do work while we were on vacation. Yeah. Uh, anytime we weren't in the parks, he was on his computers doing work. Yeah. And my mom was, when, when we were talking about this and I told her, her the name of her, of Courtney's, uh, biological mother, she's like, Oh my 
God. <laughs> and Shannon is just like, are you okay? Do we need to stop? Or are you, are you good? <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, Hey, you know, that's, that's like finding out like, like one of stings kids is, is your sibling or some shit like that. That's just, don't so you strange. wish that on me? No, I would never wish, wish that on you. Me. You're related to Sting somehow. Somehow you're related to Sting. That's right. <laughs> All right. But yeah, let's get out of here. That's that was that is way longer than I expected. How about like the show, subscribe to the podcast, go to Apple Podcasts, leave a review, go over to so Spotify and just watch that bad boy. Maybe on Buzzsprout, give it a shout, check it out. Maybe write a little review in there. Maybe go over to Facebook, find our secret chat with gunner facebook page that hasn't been posted on or um <laughs> or shared or anything whatsoever i just did it one day when i was feeling good about myself and eventually one of these days we're going to add some things to it but people have already started liking it how they find it how the hell do i know <laughs> zero clue how they found it <laughs> i thought i made it private anyways go do that maybe if a hundred of you bad boys subscribe to that thing we'll start posting content on there if not we won't. Anyways. Um, all right, Ethan. That was fun. Good little catch up, Sting. Good little catch up. I'm uh I'm excited we're back. Back at it. We got a guest next week. We got a real good guest next week. You know who that is? Some of my highest profile guests to date. Oh, what was his name? Richard Martin? Don't you <laughs> blasphemy. Don't say his name like that. This man's a world champion. I I I, I didn't even remember his name. He's a legit surprised. boxing world champion. Oh. Oh. His name is Ryan Blue Chip Martin. Oh, okay. He's from Chattanooga. I know that name. <laughs> All right. He's from Chattanooga. He is one of Chattanooga's only world champion boxers. Um, he is 28 years old. Damn. He's making his return to boxing this December. It was just announced the other day on Facebook. And we will be his first interview slash podcast back since being in a little bit of a layoff due to some, we could go to ESPN, some, got hit with some banned substances in a drug test due to some uh, contaminated supplements, which happens wow. to a lot of athletes, right? It was a four-year ban. He was able Man. to beat it and get out of it and actually fight a little bit before then. But now he's, he's coming back, been off a little bit of a hiatus, hadn't fought since 2019. And uh, excited to talk to him. Everybody that we've had in here so far, all runs in his circle. He's the one we've talked about many of times. He's he's what we would probably call in town the boxer. Gotcha. Um, the name. I'll the, do research. He's uh so there's a guy named <laughs> Triple G. Triple G's a big time boxer, right? Yeah. Um Triple G's the guy that's been having several big time fights with Canelo Alvarez, who is currently the guy. And Ryan would fight on the Triple G undercards in those big pay-per-view matchups to get yeah. his name out of there. Big time deal. I want to say he was picked up by 50 Cent for a while under his promotions as well. Dang. We'll talk all about it when we get him on the show, but he'll be here live next week. And he hit me up for the podcast. And we'll say that. That feels good. It does feel good. <laughs> feels pretty good to have a world champion boxer from Chattanooga. I want to be on chat with Gunner. <laughs> so we're going to get Mr. Blue Chip in here with the people's captain. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. So, all right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Bye.